Just getting the stream set up and ready to go. I'm gonna do a quick intro for the YouTube channel and then we'll get into the games. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel and today we're playing some 200 NL cash games. Buying for this game is $200. All right. So, getting started today. We're we playing this one here. Just join just to get game started. And then let's see, what else do we have? All right. There's the HUD. I got three handed here. I got a five handed 100. Bit of a late start today. I was over on the Poker Stars channel. Uh, so instead of starting at five, we're starting at seven. Still probably go till midnight. Probably be a five hour stream instead of the seven, just because we got the later start. Uh, but the next two days should be five to midnight. Just have to see. And just kind of moving some tables around here as we try to get started today. Small line opening here, call the jack six suited. Pair of sixes on the flop, king six three. So face bet here, you're just gonna call turn seven. I was realizing I gotta do the intro again. Sorry guys, I did to have my recorder going. Try it, take two, you guys get to watch it again. Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. And today we're back playing more cash games, playing one, two with a $200 buy. All right, there you guys get to go. You get to see the, uh, the YouTube intro take for a second time. So good river here, river two pair. Uh, we get small, I think definitely get to raise as we played this. Oops, sorry, I just ran away. There we go, back to the table. And to the fold. So button up here, fold the queen jack. So reminder, should be probably go for five hours today. We're getting a two hour late start. We're still gonna end at midnight though. Uh, I was over on the Poker Stars channel with Nick Walsh doing some commentary for the Sunday Millions over there. So that's the reason for the late start. Uh, we're gonna get some tables here, it looks like. Check raising a high flush draw over here. So we defend the big blinds, they bet we check raise. And see the call, go ahead and bet turn here. Take it down. Three bet in the button open here, seven six suited. Take it down with three bets. Uh, I just pulled myself off some 100 lately. So we got two 200s, two 100s. Again, just kind of trying to get the 200 games going. So open sevens, blind versus blind here. Go for the C bet on these six, five, two spades. Pick up a gut shot here. We're going to check the turn. And River King, not ideal. We'll go check River here. Still be kind of tempted to call against bets. Do block some like 9 7, 7 8. 
You can definitely have Asex in this line. Could have some King Highs too. I think I'm still gonna call sevens. Uh, but not like super thrilled here. I mean, get us Jack High. Race queen nine here, big one defense, go for the bet. So get check raise fold. King nine over here, hunter opens the button, we defend big blind. Check call versus third on the flop. Interesting turns, we do pick up a gut shot, but uh, we only have bottom pair. So I think it's a call this, but not super thrilled about it. And then ace on the river check. This actually probably becomes a pretty good triple barrel bluff candidate or check raise bluff candidate if he, he ends up batting the way chop it up. I was saying, because we block the, the nut flush, yeah, we block some boats there. We could turn that into a bluff if we face river bats, but just checks down, we're good. Hey, what's up, Jack? Good to see you. Ask my upswing, swear the last video, you're up like 14. So the videos, like the highlights, are going to be sometimes like two to three weeks behind real time. So if you've seen like the vlogs where it's like, you know, 10 to 15 minute videos, um, those are going to be in different spots necessarily just because like, again, I actually just started working with an editor. So uh, yeah, it could be a bit delayed on those, but yeah, I've had a pretty good run the last two weeks. Swelfy in the chat saying good job on the commentary. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in over there. I wasn't as up to date on the, the chat there when I was commentating. So if I, if there are any comments in there, I apologize. I missed it. But uh, yeah, it was fun. So I did the commentary for those of you guys didn't see it. Protostar's Twitch channel. And yeah, it was a good time. Doing the Sunday Millions. So it was like uh, basically the Sunday special version, but on the dot-com side. That was fun. Obviously like tournaments and PKO tournaments specifically, not my expertise, but it's still fun to get in there. And uh, always a good time uh, commentating with Nick Walsh. Hey, what's up, Caritas? Good to see you. I said late today. Are you for Pete's? Are you... Uh, so I was late just because I was doing the commentary. So yeah, I didn't find out till this, uh, till I woke up today that they could use me. So I don't know if they had like a different guest lined up and something didn't work out or whatever, but... But yeah, I was just jumping in the commentary booth there. I've done it a couple times before. So yeah, about two hours late getting started today. I do apologize, but yeah, helping out over there. And then uh, we'll still stream for five hours tonight, so I'll still go till midnight. End at the same time. And then the next two days we'll still, again, sh nothing should come up, so it should be 5 p.m. to midnight. And then I'll be offline for four days to watch the uh, NCAA tournament. Hopping around here. Hey, what's up, Change? Good to see us. Good to see X. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. So we get lead interior, call it the gutter. That's a gamma. I'm going to go ahead and fold the gutter on the turn. Let's throw in a 200 game in place of this one. It's up, Slick. Good to see ya. Welcome in tonight. 
Pink 5 suited. I didn't know this table wasn't set up. Let's get that organized for y'all. All right, cool. Make sure, okay, both the games there are set up. That one's set up. Okay, so we got three 200s and a 100. Probably about, uh, if I'm looking at this list right, like seven or eight 200 games. We're just on some wait lists, so. Probably get those seats shortly. Or get another one shortly, I should say. Throw at the scan button, take it down. So also if you're in the US, I see they've got this path to scoop setup. So they just announced the scoop date states so be April 5th through the 22nd in the US. And I can see they got this category called path to scoop. So it's kind of like step tournaments, it looks like, to $100 tickets. Um, the schedule itself is not out yet. But I have to imagine it'd be pretty shortly though with it starting April 5th. So yeah, looking forward to... Uh... Scoop getting here. I'll probably play three days, so the series will be two and a half weeks. I'll play the three Sundays. Other than that, I think gonna stick with the normal cash grind though. Got Jacques in here. Good to see you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. So check check here. Return the pair, and then as played about River. All right, gonna try check raise River here. So check check turn we bet. This could end up being a huge hand. So I'm gonna check jam with the nuts here. So if they have the ace or the six, they have the straight. So again, check check flop. I bet turn call and then we try to set up for check jam on the river. And snap calls. Ace seven. Let's go. So they have the ace. We get maximum there. So we came to that one late, but really happy with that hand. And end up winning a pot. All right, open up Jack-10 here. Jack's ahead, or decided to quit cash games for a little while. I need to rest my mind and work further in my game. Keep on grinding and the sit and go, so nice. I mean, it's good to recognize when you feel like you need breaks, um, whether it's to study a bit more, or just take breaks in general. So I think good to recognize that. And again, you can always come back and play later once you feel more ready to go. King's here. So open King's big blend defense here and flop the overpair. And we're gonna be up to the four 200 games. Ooh, huge turn card here. Okay, so I don't hate checking here. Um, we're gonna go for bet this time though. And just see the fold. Open, get three bet, go for the call eight seven suited. Flop middle pair, queen seven three. Goes for third, we're calling. Turn three. Oh, slick, okay, different name. Okay, I'll try to remember that on there. Good to see it in here. So here at the seven, this board is so dry. I don't think I hate folding a seven. I'll have some queen x and three x. So we'll fold that time. Jack 8 suited, hijack opens, we defend. And flop middle pair, good turn card here. Now to be fair, they check back, the turn's actually a pretty good card for their range as well. And then on the river, gonna go for a block with the clubs coming in. A weaker jack, kind of a tricky spot if we get raised. Uh, let's see, I guess it's jacks. Yeah, okay, I'll take it down. Take it down.
Raise King 5 suited, or sorry, complete King 5 suit against the button limp, and then we'll lead out flop here at the flush draw. Back call, pick up a straight draw as well. Betting turn to the snap fold. It's up predictions. Yeah, so that's why I was a bit late today. Sorry about that. So I ended up uh, doing the commentary today. So yeah, I woke up and they had a message just seeing if I could do it. I, I don't know what happened if they maybe had somebody else lined up. It just didn't work out. So I was happy to jump in. I mean, I was going to be on stream anyway. So just a little bit later getting to the stream, but we'll still uh, we'll still get in five hours, even if it's two less than scheduled. And then next reminder, stream schedule this week's going to be a bit lighter. Same with the week after. So we're going to be streaming uh, 5 p.m. to uh, noon eastern standard time or sorry 5 p.m to midnight eastern standard time the next two days and i'll be offline thursday through sunday Jack suited. So open H Jack suited, big blind defends, few back doors here. Flop nine on the turn. And go ahead and check turn, ace on the river. So chop with the other ace-x, I think we do need to go for the bet here. Obviously get open ourselves up to gain check raise against some nine X. Um I'd probably be calling, honestly. I mean I guess the jacks kind of bags I don't want clean jack jack time to be blocked, because that's kind of the best bluffs. Uh, the size to go small. We're just going to call pretty quick. Good versus the king. Raise queen 10. Big one defense here. Go for the bet. That call. Uh, the question is, do I use this as a bluff and kind of go crazy with it? I'm just going to check here, but I don't hate the idea. And once they check, we'll check river. Who's the ace nine there? Is the king ten take it down? King four suit over here gonna open cutoff. Let's see the call start with small bet. So bet call. Pick up the flush draws of the turn. We check a lot though. I'm gonna check here and then river a little something. Don't beat a ton. I'd probably call against blocks. Bigger bets. I'm leaning a bit more folding. Checks. We just check. Give her seven. Check back flop here, king on the turn. And that turn.
I have a queen six, check flop here, eight, seven, six, two hearts. And check turn. So four liner comes in, be set up for a check call here. And let's play check river. So it becomes a pretty decent spot for them just to bluff a ton here. I think I'm still gonna fold the six though. Call some of their better pairs. There, take it down. So nothing too crazy early, up about a buy-in, 233. Stell said as a Wisconsin fan, I've seen a lot of analysts picking the 12-5 upset. Yeah, are they playing? I can't remember which of the 12 seeds they're playing. Are they playing James Madison? But yeah, I've seen Wisconsin losing that 12-5 matchup as a pretty popular pick. Uh, table tennis, sorry, I missed your message. Let me double check here, higher. Say good evening, glad to see PokerStars finally brought in a tournament expert for the Sunday Millions coverage. Yeah, they brought in a cash game player. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was fun doing that today. Glad you enjoyed that. But yeah, that was, uh, it was fun. It's always good commentating with Nick. I like Nick a lot. Super nice guy. I've had a chance to meet him in person a couple times too. But yeah, I just did some commentary for the Sunday Million over .com earlier today, so that's why we're having the late start here. You're gonna open King Jack button flats, big line calls as well. And just two folds. Jump over here at nines. Opening nines here, small line flats. Gonna go for check here. Four on the turn. Uh, bets for half, gonna go ahead and call. King of the river. So our, some straight draws I missed. We have to block some of those with the nines. King makes it unlikely they're betting a ton of 10x except maybe ace 10. Uh, they check where it's gonna check, good versus eights. So open king nine check. And check turn as well on the ace heart river. Yeah, 
it's pot size, but just finish folding. Decade suit over here, under gun opens, we defend. I'm gonna go for the chuck raise. Jack Jack 9. Or 10 10 9, sorry. I wish it was Jack Jack 9, we'd have trips. <laughs> but we'll bet the open under. Four on the turn. And gonna go for the over bet turn. I didn't see the turn fold. Undergun limps, button raises the $8. We're going to 3 bet the Ace King suit out of small blinds. Back over to the button here. So see the call, huge flop for Ace King. We're flop top two here. Ace King nine two hearts. Bet call set eight turn. Uh, let's see, it's pretty wet board. I don't hate the idea of check jamming or just betting. So I'm just gonna go for the bet here. Calls beautiful river card. Uh, we block a lot of the. I'm trying to think if I reduce the check call. I don't hate the idea of check calling with the draws missing some, but we'll still get some ace sacks to call too, so I'm going to be all in here. Hoping for the call here at the top two. And eventually does call with the 8-4, so they missed their flush draw, hit running two pair. Huge run out for the Ace King. Perfect. Improves them, but not quite enough to beat us. All right. So, puts us at plus 460 today. Continue moving things in a good direction. So I continue to fold a little bit. Gotta throw this table in. King six over here, full button. Uh, Federer's asking about like regular tables versus zoom tape, like fast fold tables. So I actually don't have access to zoom tables here. We just have reg tables in the US market. So I'd have to defer to chat for like hands on experience. What I usually hear from people is that like win rates are usually higher at reg tables. Um, it just really depends on how big the win rate difference is though, because you're getting more hands at zoom, right? So you just kind of have to do a calculation and try to figure out to the best of your ability of like what. Uh, if like the lower big blind per 100 still means you get more hourly because you're getting in more hands. Um, but again, it's I, I don't really know. And it's also going to be hard to get exact numbers on that, right? Because you just need huge sample sizes. And by the time you get them, the game dynamics can change quite a bit. So...
So continue to fold a little bit. Biggest stack is this table here, the 596. This is where we got those two uh, knockouts. So up about two buy and stay, 455. Good start. Early, but a good start. Table tennis said it was fun to see you do commentary earlier. And also looking forward to see you play some more tournaments again with the results you've been having. I can understand why it's hard to leave the cash game streets. Yeah. It's uh cash has been going really well this year. I've been really enjoying it. And but yeah, I'll be in the mix for coop tournaments on Sundays. Uh, but I don't think it's gonna be like last year where I played like in the fall, I played literally all 18 days. Uh the spring, I think I played like 12 out of 18. So I think this one's just gonna be three. Also, a lot of times like the major Sunday will be a two-day event, especially the coop main. So like that could carry over into like the Mondays, but I would just play like that term and then play cash after. Limp here, gonna raise up the aces. See the call. Go ahead and bet flop here. Gotta be a little careful out of position here. Oh, we just bet and take it down. And asking why do you show in money instead of big blind or in lines so i think a lot of times like for content for the shorter form content people really like seeing dollars as opposed to big lines and then if i had to guess um as far as like stream it's kind of split so it's for the content side uh whereas if i was playing like off stream i would just play big blinds it's easy to follow for me because i'm only playing one maybe two stake levels at a time whereas like tournaments i switched to playing in big blinds because it got uh a lot more difficult to like keep up with like different terms and different stages and blinds constantly changing. All right. It was nice and great start today. Yeah, so far so good. Interesting spot here with the King Queen. So open pre call, we just call the turn. I lead for 10%, get called. And then I'm trying to think if this is a call a hand or a check raise on the river. Such a good raising candidate. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this into a bluff. Straight blocker, boat blocker, nut flush blocker. I'm trying to make an ace fold the river here. Even a hand like ace king, ace jacks in a pretty sick spot. So I'm gonna turn this into a bluff. And get jammed on. Alright, so even though we have like the best blocking hand to run a crazy bluff, just see the fold. Can't bluff anymore once they go all in. Raise aces, call about the 973. Uh, mains, I probably would have jammed ace, queen, ace, jack in that spot. So, yeah, that would been kind of tilting if I had jammed one of those and lost. But fortunately for us, we had the top two there. Check and turn here. Uh, river either calling or betting ourselves. If they were to block, I'd probably raise for value. And half pot will just call pretty quick and win most of the time. Yeah, I get her's king nine there. So currently up about 400 today. Raising the cutoff limp here. See the call eight five four rainbow with a diamond. I'm gonna go ahead and check the turn or to the turn. Sorry, five on the turn. Yeah, go ahead and check six river. As played, I'll probably start bluffing river. And if they bet, we'll just let it go. Eight's over here opening hijack three bets. As long as nobody four bets, we'll be going for a flat. And flop the set. Nice, pretty dry board here. There's a flush draw, but. I think when this cards are this disconnected, I'm going to do some more trap calling, especially when I have a spade. 
Um, and then a turn we'll go for the overbet. Three, four. And see the fold. Cut off open series three bet in the button ace queen. And against four bets. Uh, button versus cutoff just gonna call here. Take it to the flop, and unfortunately don't flop too much here. Jack nine five, two diamonds. Flop fold. Check 10 suited here. Cutoff opens. We threw about the small blind call. Check the five turn. So most turn sizes we'd be calling here. Very good river. So they should have a decent amount of 10x too, but I think can still go big. And if they jam a little bit six, we lose a king 10, queen 10, but I think we'd want to go for it. Um, could even consider check jamming. That'd be kind of fun too. Decide so just to try to go big bet though for Valiant and Ace. They fold. Bit tighter here. We'll let this go though. JMAX said he was asking Lex about how much poker volumes MTT is at like 99%. Yeah, I think that's the case for all the streamers besides me. I think all, I don't think any of them play cash at all for stars. I'm the uh, I'm the opposite. I'm the the one that plays a little bit of a tiny bit of MTTs and then uh, mostly cash. But yeah, I think every other streamer's uh, basically plays exclusively MTTs. Open, small line three bet flat here with the jack nine two. Uh J Mac, I have no idea how he did in the uh the game because it's I don't think it's been uh recorded and shown yet. So yeah, I had no idea how he did on that. I was excited to see him there playing it though. So I'm, I'm excited for when the episodes come out. But yeah, I had no idea how he did. But yeah, so cooking it, they have, they're bringing back the, uh, the big game and they shot an episode that, or two episodes that are going to be put into recordings, um, in Vegas NAPT. I don't know when they're releasing them or if that's been announced, but yeah, he was in Vegas to play that. Call Jack seven, chopping here seven two. Uh, Finn asking, do you cook or order? For, uh, I do not cook at all. So I mostly, I'll order sometimes. A lot of times, I try to go pick it up myself. I do eat some stuff around the house. Like I'll eat like uh, a lot of bowls of Cheerios, apples, bananas, oranges. Um, but then as far as like other meals I don't really I don't cook anything so I'd go out to get it 
Hijack opens here, threat and queenjack suited. Base four bets. I think this is a call about 150 bigs effective. So interesting flop. Flop and gutter with the backdoor clubs. Both sides just gonna be floating against here. Hopefully they don't go for like half pot or something and put us in a weird spot. I would imagine like third and under I call if they start going bigger I would even consider folding. But they check, interesting. So this one's really interesting because like queen jack blocks queens, blocks jacks. It's an ace high flop. I'm gonna go ahead and check this. It's like I have bad blockers because I want him to have queen jack, but then when he checks here, it, I mean I guess this could be pretty nutted here. They check for a second time, we're gonna check. So now we're just hoping he has like tens and nine on the river. Pots the river. And yes, feels like they're trying to get paid. The hand that was trying to slow play we will drop it. Jack nine suited, get three back, go ahead and drop it. Nine eight suited over here, open, flat, squeeze. We're pretty deep with big blind. I wouldn't normally have a lot of calls with this player in between, but we're actually really deep in getting a decent price. So I'm just gonna flat this time with nine eight suited. And then we flop an eight here, ten eight five. So it goes for half pot, we'll call. We have an eight and a few backdoor straight draws. Interesting turn. So we pick up the open and straight draw, but the spade's really bad. They check, happy to check. Two on the river. And I'm just gonna take the showdown here. Lose the 10 9 suited. Limp here, button raise, we're going to three bets. So back over the button now. So they do call, go for the bet here on the king seven three. Back call, two turn, check turn. And queen on the river. Going to check with intention to potentially check call this. I wonder if I could even block this. The more I think about it, I actually wish I would have. Checking like four, five, six, and seven, eights, nines. Ends up checking down though. Tens are good. Good verse, ace high. Good verse, ace ten there.
open three bet. Got to drop this. Jude asking you also answer questions in the chat. Yes. Yeah. Feel free to put in messages here. There's a stream delay, so it's a five minute delay, but yeah, I'm happy to answer when they uh, come through. David Tennant said hearing that would make David K cooking stream interesting. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants that. I know I don't want it because I don't want to eat it. So we're, uh, we're going to stay away from the cooking content here on Twitch. <laughs> Probably best for everybody most ex Especially myself, as I'm the one to be eating it. <laughs> Seems better that way. Check here against Small and Limp and flop the open under. And Queen Jack. Go ahead and bet and check to. So bet call. And going to bet again. If we get called, I'd bluff Heart Rivers otherwise do a lot of giving up, I think. Or we can just get there. Perfect. Ace on the end to go for the value bet now. raises triple checking make sure we have the nuts i assume they're calling anything but we'll uh click it back or only calling sorry with the chops but we'll click this back here all right chop it up oh they flopped the stray that's sick terrible river for them here we have Undergun open, we flat. Uh, call a flop bet, pretty interesting turn to pick up the flush draw. Go with the King Jack here. And it says to go for a slight over, but I think two hours in the flush draw we can call here. And then hit a King on the river. So outside of Jam, I feel like we have a pretty easy call. Jam's interesting. Having diamonds is bad, but it's hard for us to have a lot of King X here. do jam wow all right so i mean what are they repping like twos full or quad twos tens full aces is ace king betting turn so weird spot i'm trying to think if i don't call this how much how many calling kings do i really have outside of like king 10 king three i want you to have king three pocket tens i can have in this line I think I've maybe seen enough aggression out of this player that we call this down. Uh, whereas I think we fold this against a lot of people. I mean, like I said, having diamonds is bad, but it's kind of the only way I get here with a king besides king 10. I think I'm going to find the call, but... Mm, I mean, we can overfold these spots in general, but again, from what I've seen... Uh, I mean, these, they open under the gun, so they shouldn't have a lot of 2x. Uh, I think okay so the first time I see them do is we're gonna get it in uh kings is gonna be all in against ace two suited over here for 150 bigs each so I jam they call hit quads by the river it's the same player that we just fold the king jack to so it makes me feel way worse about the king jack fold but do end up making a nice amount of money there jumping down here the ace king we squeeze get four bet it's gonna be all in and see the fold but yeah, I wish I would have seen that Kings versus Ace 2 hand like a minute earlier. Uh, it would have helped making that call. 
Kick nine suit, we open, get three bet, call here, queen three two. Few back doors. Against half pot. I have a few back doors here. I think can float this, but these are spots I need to get a little bit better at. Five on the turn. So if I see check, I'll bet here, and then the river. So we block, I mean, they're gonna have king, queen, O in range too, so I don't know if it's, we block queen, nine, suited, which they could have, I guess. But if they bet here, we're just gonna fold pretty quickly. Um, so if I ate out every day, I'd be like 350 pounds. Um, I mean, it's probably not like the best thing either. Like I could definitely be in a bit better shape than I am, but I do try to eat stuff that's not like terrible. Like I'm not going to like McDonald's or Taco Bell or, you know, Burger King, stuff like that. I, I eat at Chipotle a ton. So like of the places to get quick food, that's probably about it. You know, one of the better places to go get. It's not perfect, but so I eat there a lot. Cut off open here, threat king queen suited. And take it down. Cut off open to the player sitting out. We threw at the king queen suited. And just take it down. Continue to fold a little bit. If we got East Nine suit over here. Hey, what up, Money BLK? Good to see you in the chat. Thanks for tuning in. So, first of all, you did a very good job on the Sunday Millions broadcast. Thank you. I appreciate that. Glad you enjoyed it. So, yeah, for those of you who didn't catch it earlier today, I was on the Poker Stars channel with Nick Walsh doing commentary for the Sunday Millions. Uh, played from like, I think it was like 20 players down to the winner. So, yeah, that was always fun. I enjoyed hanging out with Nick and, uh, Doing some commentary together. So yeah, it was a good time. Glad you enjoyed it. Asking how long you'll be playing this evening. I uh, probably... So I didn't know I was going to be doing the commentary until this morning when I woke up. They asked if I could help out. So I was originally scheduled 5 to 12. I think we're going to go 7 to 12, so I'll still end at midnight. But we'll still get in 5 hours. Just a 2 hour late start due to the commentary. But yeah, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing it. Um, okay, yeah, so what do you think of the poker store or poker stars having a path to poker stars for scoop? I think it's good. I mean, anytime you can have like that's been very popular on the dot com side. So for anyone wondering what money BLK is talking about, there's a path to scoop here. So basically there's different step programs where you can try to get to coop events. So it's, you know, kind of like step events, satellites. So they have a couple $10 ones where you can get $100 tickets. A lot of people would really enjoy those on the dot com side. What do I think about Michigan State's draw? I got I was just happy they were in the tournament. They were in the last bracket announced. I was honestly scared for a minute. Um and like when I saw Virginia got in, who wasn't projected to get in, I was really nervous. But I'm happy that State got a they don't even have to play in the play-in, which is huge. I thought there's a chance they'd have to do that. They were projected to have to, so they got in and they don't have to play a play-in game. So I think about all you can hope for. If they win, they have to play Carolina, who's a one seed in the second round. But I mean again, you can't be too picky when you're that low of a team. So just to be in the tournament and then not having to play a first round game in Dayton, I think is a, a huge win. And about as good as they could hope for. Uh, tight check fold here, but when they pop this, we'll fold.
Ah, uh, h2, that's right. I forgot about the 8 forehand, too. It's a good point with the King Jack. I forgot about the 8 forehand. Yeah, especially with that new information. Plus, I saw them call 150 big blind all in with ace 3. Yeah, I just need to fold, call the King Jack there. Too bad I forgot about that. 8 forehand, it's a really good point. All right, well, Queen's over here on the button. Go ahead and open this one. So we have a queen's called. See the ace out there in three diamonds, the other queen of diamonds. Just see fold. Int's asking, do you go with a ace king all in every four bet, five bet? Not necessarily, no. Not especially when we're like super deep. Uh, there'll be times I flat against three bets too, so it doesn't get to that point at some frequency. More so in position than out of position, but, but yeah, so not always. But a lot of the time. Raise Jack 10, bet flop, take it down. Continue to fold a little bit, fold the A7 down here in the cutoff. Raise 8 7, call about the A side board here. So bet here. Do pick up the gut shot without being a heart though. I think mostly checking. Might barrel like 8-7 with a heart. And then River going to bluff small here. And get the fold. Perfect. Or he said, gee, 600 positive in less than an hour. It's like $100 every 10 minutes. <laughs> imagine, I know, imagine if you could have that win rate consistently. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to keep that up for, uh, for a whole year, but definitely happy with the start for today, that's for sure. Definitely been a nice start, and then today's starting good as well. Edgar in the chat with good luck wishes. Thank you, Edgar. Ramondo in here. What's up, Ramondo? Good to see you. Thanks for the kind message. Appreciate it. Glad you're enjoying the stream. And yeah, it's fun to hang out with everybody. I appreciate everybody watching the stream as well. Makes it more enjoyable for me too. But yeah, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. I really appreciate the kind message. It's good to have you here. Tui with good luck wishes. Appreciate you, Tui. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, 
And Aaron coming through with the massive raid. The legend Aaron Baroni. Good to see you, buddy. Appreciate the massive raid. As we're about an hour in here. Hope you're well. Guys, I'm sure you already pretty know pretty sure you already know Aaron. There we go, if I can talk. Uh, if you somehow haven't checked out his channel, I definitely recommend hitting that link there below. Extremely good tournament player. Super nice guy. Super good stream. You guys are going to learn a lot about MTTs over there. So if you want some MTT content on Twitch and you haven't checked out Aaron's stream already, definitely need to do so. Appreciate the tier one sub for eight months as well coming through. Thanks for the support. Hope the session was a good one. If you're still able to stick around, let me know how it went. If not, maybe someone coming through on the raid can let us know. Member of the 888 stream team. And like I said, really good stream, guys. If you want to watch tournaments, both for entertainment and educational side, definitely give them a follow if you haven't already. And appreciate the massive raid. Uh, for those of you new here, welcome. My name's David, and I'm getting jammed on, so we're going to fold. So I play primarily uh, cash games. I'll sometimes dabble in at tournaments during coops, but mostly just play mid-stakes cash. I play 200 NL. Member of PokerStars Team Pro over in the U.S., so I also play exclusively in the U.S. player pool. So this is between the states of Michigan and New Jersey. And as I live in Michigan, like I said, about an hour in today, so we're still pretty early in the session. And on the grind... Four tables going at the moment. I'm usually playing four tables for cash. And session stats are in the white section below the webcam. So you can see a pretty hot start here. We're already up to uh, plus three buy-ins today. Three betting against button open here. Six, five suited. Uh, Queen, jack, seven. Go for small bet. King turn. Do I want to get crazy here? <laughs> um, uh, I think I'm going to check and then use this as a block on the river. Getting a really good price on my bluff with like 6x here. Ooh, actually river a little bit of something. The problem is we lose the like, we don't beat much. So the question is, I could have ace king on this line. I'm trying to think if I want to bluff huge. All right, I'm going to eat, oh gosh, six beats. I just don't think we beat anything once he calls. So I'm trying to fold the smaller pairs in like a jack. I definitely take this line with ace king. Um, so we do see the fold there. Kind of an interesting spot there. Because like I said, once they call that flop, like a lot of their gutters... I mean, we do beat a hand, like let's say they missed like 9-8, and that's about it. 10-9 gets there. 10-8, I guess, misses too. But a lot of times those will bluff if we check to them, so we just end up effectively losing anyways. So I decide to bluff this by hitting bottom pair on the river. And if we're going to bluff once we hit a pair, I think mainly want to use the big size. Um, like I said, I still got an ace-king in that line. Could have some ace-10 traps from out of position, I think, reasonably too. 10-9 traps, so... Uh, this is a wild hand here. Uh, this is a super wild hand. So we get check raised on the flop bet. Multi-way, call, call, turn checks through, and then check jams river. So we have top two, so we beat two pairs. I don't think he's going to want to jam like 10-8 here. Again, he's probably not going to have that on the flop. It seems like a set pretty often. Or like turn to the straight and got sneaky. So I'm going to fold... The end, I'm not sure on the size here. When I go half, is maybe supposed to be a three-quarter spot. But as we play this for now, it's a pretty sick bluff line there if Atomic took it. But we'll fold. That was an interesting hand. All right, so still profitable today, about 567. Football in the chat, so good evening and getting ahead early. I see, yeah, so far a good start. If you're hopping in the game tonight, good luck to you as well. Ace nine suited down here. Raising 8 7 suited, couple calls here. Queen 6 2. So I go for the C bet here, multi wave. That King 10 hand was super interesting in my river top two. That was a pretty crazy hand. All right, so I'm not going to want to bet turn two often here, but I think a weak flush draw. 
gonna mix in some bets here too. I'll have some six X that's opening when the shoe falls and bets flop. So use like, especially a weaker flush draw. I'd probably check like the ace high flush draw. Here I'm just gonna give up on river. I don't think I'm gonna try to get him to fold uh, like a queen. Six probably doesn't fold. They could have an ace two suited some. They lead here, we'll fold. Button opens through that small blind calls. Ace nine on the turn here. I'm gonna go ahead and check turn. Get small but full turn. I appreciate the good luck wishes, Aaron. And like I said, Massive Raid really do appreciate that. And the sub. So again, guys, if I, I have a lot of times people ask me about when I'm gonna play more tournaments, and the answer is not not very often. But if you're looking for somewhere to hang out and watch tournaments, I definitely recommend Aaron's stream if you haven't checked it out already. So I haven't played any tournaments yet this year, but we did just announce today that uh, US Coop's going to be running April 5th through the 22nd. So I'm not going to play the full series like I did last fall, but I'm going to play the three Sundays, uh, which includes the main event on the uh, last Sunday. So I'll be getting in there for those. Schedule hasn't been released yet, but just like a save the date kind of thing. But the main event's like almost always on the last Sunday. It's usually a two-day event. High in range in the past has been 300, but again, I don't know if that's what it'll be this time. But my guess would be probably something around that range. I'm sure it'll have tons of satellites. And we've got aces over here. Nice. So we threw at aces get called. Gonna bet flop if we get called. I think start trapping just in about any turn here at top set in the diamond, but we see the fold quickly. So we'll bet flop out of position just because that's board about a ton, and then turn I would probably start trapping. Open, we threw at take it down. Jerry, talk about the uh, the six five hand where I bluffed, or are you saying you think Atomic was bluffing when I had King Ten? King Ten hand's pretty sick. I mean, it's tough when I fold that because I'm just folding so much, but. Nine's over here. Open the nines, get called, check flop here with all diamonds. Check, check to the turn. Check river here. And still good there, nice. So not the best river, but still not being good. And yeah, they said jack high. Raising King 10 suited, small one flats, check back here. Seven of diamonds on the turn. So pick up the flush draw, go along with the 10. And going to check turn, five river. 
probably either value betting or calling here. I'd probably bet a spin as like queen jack here, or sorry, queen 10. So go for the bet here on the river. And see the claw king 10 is good. Good versus pocket fours, beat the pocket pair. Looking pretty good start up about two and a half buy-ins. So plan today is to go for five hours. Started two hours like we were doing the commentary earlier. So just uh, still ending at the same time, but go at least five hours. So about an hour, a little over an hour in tonight. So I'll be back online the next two days as well, 5 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time. And I'll be offline for four days. Taking some time to watch the NCAA basketball tournament. So pretty excited for that. Jack opens here, three red and cut off with ace jack. So see the call eight seven to check in here, five on the turn. And against turn bet fold. Want to be okay? Mentioned that instant day of poker yesterday. Play the mini Sunday special. High roller just twenty. Want to make it the final table and finish seventh? Nice for three hundred thirty-six dollars or three twenty-six. That's awesome. Congrats on the the final table run. Nice little score. So basically, I think how the high roller Sunday works is what they're doing is they're taking all the normal Sunday tournaments, like the big marquee ones, including like the mini special, and they're just like you know making it a bigger buy-in. So like instead of being a ten dollar buy-in, it's a twenty. The high roller is a two fit or five hundred instead of two fifty. The special is a two hundred instead of a one hundred. So it's like all it's like the high roller edition. It's not that twenty dollars a high roller. It's like the high roller edition Sunday, because all the buy-ins they're playing like double the price, double the buy-in. Good number of tables going on on the site right now. 200 and else. We got 11 games running. Open 8 7 suited, big one defends. Flop in the flush draw with the middle pair here. Take it down. Big flop over here against Under the Guns. Under Gun opens, we defend big blind. Flop top two. Go for small check raise. See the call for on the turn. And go for over bat turn. Call 
calls three river. SPR about one and a half to one here, and I think pretty clearly just going to be a jam for value. Good to see a lot, decent amount of the draws miss. The only draws that come in were backdoor, so we'll go for the jam. Hopefully we get called by those overpairs or like the good 10x. Like I said, lots of draws miss, flush draws miss, straight draws miss, calls down with aces. Can't fault them for the call. And we get to pretty fortunate there with a the 10-8. A pot with the 10.8 puts us at plus 729 today. Using King Jack as a 4 bet this time. So it's we open, get 3 bet, put in the 4 bet. Unfortunately, I don't see the snap fold. Don't see a snaffle, but we do flop well. So we're back quarter here, top pair. Balls, double flush draws, gonna be a jam here. We have some like tens at flat. Obviously, nines be kind of annoying in this spot. Uh, can still like jack ten, queen jack. They want to call. So we can get worse to call. Would be worried about like trapped aces here, some too, trapped kings, but go for the value jam. See the call eight seven. We got seventy nine percent. Can't hold. Oh, so we had to fade the pair in the gutter, and unfortunately, King Jack just cannot hold there. We lose a buy in. Unfortunately, no good. Is the eights couple calls here seven six two go for the check here and at nine on the turn start betting turn Off opens here, defend 10 9, check flop. So we flop the gut shot. King and Jack 4. Bets here. We'll call one with the gutter. Turn 6, check turn. If we face bets, I wouldn't be shocked to face over bets. Uh, but even against like 3 quarters, just be folding turn. Hopefully, it checks though. And yeah, fully spot there. Got Jay Gill in the chat. What's up, Jay Gill? Said, how'd I like be on the PokerStars channel today for the Sunday Millions? Was it your first time? So yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was actually my third time doing it. So I've done it. I did it once with both Nick and Arlie. So they were three of us. And then I did another time with just Nick and I. So it was my third time. I haven't done it for a while, but yeah, it's always a good time. I The commentary is fun. Obviously, I'm not like the most like um, expert tournament player. So, you know, it can be a little bit difficult, especially because usually the Sunday Million, it's a PKO, which I'm even less studied and knowledgeable about. <laughs> and then... Uh, but it's still fun. Like it's it's good to do commentary. Nick's really good to work with. He makes it really easy. And uh enjoy hanging out with him and having a good time there watching the event. But yeah, that was fun. Nick's like I said, Nick's a super good guy and he and he's so good at his job. He makes it like really easy. Like I said, even for me, like it's probably I would guess of like any of the streamers like it's most difficult with me because that's like I'm again, I'm not really an expert on mtts by any stretch i don't play a lot of tournaments but he makes it he does like a really good job of like engaging with the conversation and then like 
you know, just talking through spots and, you know, not making, you know, making my life really easy just to kind of talk through things, which is good. I feel like we have a pretty good rapport too, of just like, you know, just like talking through the hands, but then also, you know, some side conversations that are still entertaining for the stream. So I think it's, uh, I think it goes well. But yeah, he's, like I said, he's an extremely good commentator and like really good at running a broadcast. And he's really knowledgeable about the game too, which is awesome. So he has, like his background's mostly in spins. He plays some MTTs, but like his biggest background's of spins. Uh, I know he's played some cash too, but he uh, he's all around like very knowledgeable player as well. And you guys just saw the ten eights versus eights is handy. Yeah, that was a fun one. That was a good one. Unfortunately, the King Jack we gave the money right back, but. Still a couple uh, interesting pots back to back there. Small one open, call 10 9 suited, flop the gut shot. Checks to be able to go for bet. So bet call. I'll turn the nine here. So pick up a pair to go with the gutter now. River two pair brings in the four liner backdoor clubs. Kind of interesting one against big bets. Small bets we just call. This is tricky. Ugh. I mean, it does feel like we're folding a lot. It's tough when four liners with a flush come in though. When he goes this big, I don't think he's repping even sets. Uh, I might have gone fold here. I think when he goes to this size, he's basically just saying a straight, like an eight or king queen or queen eight or the flush. So again, it doesn't mean he has it. But we'll fold for the time being. Raise King Man suited, big one fun series six five. Yeah, go for bet. I get check raise, go ahead and drop it. River this straight down here. Checks through flop and turn, we'll bet river. There's diamonds out there, but I don't think they're gonna check diamonds very often on the turn if they check flop. So, anyways, take down. Um MX, the commands aren't set up on YouTube. Sorry about that. I know you guys are seeing in the title. I don't know how to change. I got to change the, the titles at some point here. But basically what it's trying to announce is that US Scoop is here. Uh, the schedule has been announced for April 5th through the 22nd. Uh, the dates are not or those dates are listed. The events are not posted yet, but I would imagine very shortly. Got iBoss in the chat with a four months prime sub. Thank you, iBoss. Thanks for supporting and using your prime sub here. Ace King bet flop horrible turn card. Leads just going to call here. Uh, river, not the best river in the world. So clubs do miss. Seven eight comes in though. Queen jack comes in. Queen ten jack ten less likely to bluff. So if they went really big, I would probably fold. If we face like potter, they're probably going to call. They check. I don't think this player is going to check better. And if they check raise, we'll just believe them. So I'm actually going to go for the bet here, hoping that they just get really sticky with like Jack-10, Queen-10 sometimes, or they have a weaker king. This is a little bit tricky, because like I said, we do need to fold if we get jammed on. But I'm going to try and squeak out some value here, and they just fold. Pop a huge draw here. So we open on the gun, big line defense. Go for the bat with the open and straight flush draw. And see the fold. The 
defend here and flop a flush draw. Check check that turn. And see the fold. Nine three down there, fold that. Small one opens, call ace nine in the big here, flop the ace ace ten seven. Small bet's turn, go ahead and call. King on the turn. Let's turn, call again. And not gonna love the Club River. Uh, pretty good ace. I mean, it's just a bluff catcher we face bets. Like I said, club's pretty bad. I would really like to have the nine of clubs at least, or the ace of clubs, I guess. He checks, we're really happy to check here. And give us 10. King, queen, open, flat, squeeze. Just gonna fold this one here this time. Hey, what's up, Mayhem? Good to see you in the chat. Things are going well so far. Yeah, pretty good start. Ways to go, but... Uh, I did get a late start today, doing that commentary that we talked about for the PokerStars channel, but I will still be going till midnight, so we'll still have a five-hour stream, even though originally we were going to do seven. Tomorrow will be at five... The next two days, I should say, five to midnight. 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to midnight, and then I'll be offline for four days. Open eight, skip three bet, go for the call here. Ten four two two clubs. So checks to me, going to check back here. Five of clubs turn. I would do risk getting check raise here, but we're gonna go for a small bet here for value. And then check any river for the most part. And yeah, we're gonna face king high. Maybe hey, we're targeting there. Is it good? So we got stacks 599, 513, 234, 
Man, Ace King over here. Brace Nice King, big one defense here. Jack nine five, two clubs. Got Jack back here. Six of spades on the turn. And over bets. Quite a bit of draws out there. I think we'll use like our paired hands though, the call. That we'll have here and give up the ace highs. Potentially call against like pot and under. Raise take the queen jack. So undergun opens here, defend the king jack, jack 10, 5. Hey, what's up, Mikey Sin? You've been grinding. Let's get him, David. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I've been on the grind this year, and it's uh, so far been going well for us, which is nice. Good to see in here, though, today. So undergun bets, flop, and then turn, check, check, bet big on the river. Actually, no, they have the king more in range, so I'm probably going to play more checks here. Actually, no, I probably have more King X because I'll have like more random King X, but I think when I check here that they can go for value with like decent two pairs. And yeah, we'll go for the check raise here. And just see the fold. Six is here, open the button. Let's see a three bet out of a small blind, we'll go ahead and call. And 10 5 5. And goes for a small bet, just gonna call here, ace on the turn. Check, check here, turn to a bluff. Uh, let's see. I think I'm gonna start turning this into a bluff. So I'll definitely have five X in range, six, five, ace, five, five, four. Um, they decide to call against small. And then I think I'm gonna bluff jam here. I would probably go for this with like ace queen even, the low frequency of ace king flats. So I'm basically trying to get like kings, queens, jacks to fold mostly. As well as some 10x. Even some weaker ace x here. They just don't think I'm bluffing enough and I'm heavy in like ace queen, ace jack here. So I would use six as a bluff jam. for the bluff jam. So 
was hoping for a snap fold. Unfortunately, I don't get that. Um, so probably can get some snap folds from like King Queen of Spades, King Jack of Spades, uh, Queen Jack of Spades. If they decide to take that line, which they could. Um, so like I said, I'm trying to get like Ace Nine and lower to fold potentially, but then especially like the Kings Queens Jacks, Jack Ten suited stuff. So as far as my value range, I'd probably go for this with Ace Queen, Ace Ten, any of my five X. Ace seven, I probably don't have because I probably don't bet turn. I could be bluffing sevens on the turn, like I'm bluffing sixes that turns into a boat. Um, so yeah, that'd be about it. So ends up calling it the weaker ace, good call from them. Decide to try to run the bluff with sixes. It doesn't work out, get caught. So I'm gonna want to take a look at that one. I'm trying to work on turning, like taking how to play some of the like small pairs in position. I know you can turn them into bluff sometimes. Um, but again, need to do some work on like picking out which ones and the spots and the suits and everything. So, so bluff gets caught there. Still about 339 today. Tens over here. Open on the gun. We three bet get called. See bet the jack five four flop. Get check raised. I right, call one here. And then queen on the turn. Turn will probably fold my tens, but like call my jack x here. I guess it's kind of interesting because like what are they i guess like this is kind of the same strength i guess with no backdoor flush draws coming in there's gonna be a little less bluffing so we'd have to hope for mostly ace three ace two seven six so i'm gonna fold tens here if this has like a backdoor flush draw i'm more likely to call though just because there's more of those barrels with like you know let's say um some like king i mean to be fair they could barrel king 10 still too but i'm saying like you know a king 10 suited with like the flush draw that comes in that could be a barrel from them too. We obviously block that pretty heavily with two tens though. King Jack suit over here, cut off opens, three betting. So three bet against Decorn. And pretty good flop. So King King three. Start with a small bet. Get check raised. All right, so pretty dry board. We get check raised on here. Ace king. He probably four bets mostly. Pretty mostly be worried about king queen here. But we'll just call. He can have some backdoor draws too. So it's actually kind of interesting on what I want to do on turn. Probably just want to call again, and then hope for no club on the river. So yeah, we're just gonna call, hoping for no club, because you can have those back doors there. You can have like ace four as well. Um, river kind of stinks here on the end. Chop with the king, because we were beating. Chop with king queen now, though. We do beat three is full, which would be pretty bad for them. <laughs> so, he checks here. Unfortunately, I don't think we get called by a ton on this spot, but maybe he has like the ace five, ace five probably checks turn. We'll jam the river. It's kind of a weird spot when we jam for value. I don't know if we want to get called if we do. It's like chops a lot. Oh, do you have threes? The puke makes me think. The puke emoji there makes me think. Might be the case. Well, that, a lot of times people won't check raise boats, but maybe cut on that board. With it being two kings. Alright, so we're going to be at three bet and ace two suit to get called. Check back the 10 7 4, nine of clubs turn. And ace on the river. It's a club, but we do it in ace. Just going to check down here and lose ace seven. I'm gonna be okay, ready for PA scoop. So on the heels of a great bounty builder series. Yeah, that's true. You had like got some momentum going into it for sure after that uh, good series. Hopefully uh, carry on over to scoop. Ace jack open, get three bet flat here, flop the ace, ace queen three. These are about 272 effective. Yeah, this player's been pretty aggressive today, so this might be a, a flop where it feels like we're going to be holding on and just praying that we're good. So bets will call, seven of diamonds turn. 
So yeah, if they bet turn, we'll just do the same thing and just call. I guess I could consider jamming. Yeah, that's, nah, I probably don't want to do that. I don't know. I guess we just call and then like hope to see like the Broadway miss. I mean, if I hit two pair, probably not like the worst thing, but we probably don't want to see like a king or a 10 or a diamond. They go, go for a slight over bet. So I think call here and then call any non-diamond river. Ugh, yuck. King's really bad too. So we do block Jack-10, but then like if they were value betting Ace-King, well Ace-King was already beating us, but against this player I was not going to fold, but ugh. Part of me still wants to call versus them. To be fair, like a lot of their bluffs though, if they had like King-Jack, King-10 are going to check the river here. And then, yeah, I actually think I do fold this, even, even the way they've been playing aggressive. We could jam the turret, like I said, but I think given their aggression, I want to give them a chance to bluff rivers. Most of the time, it's not going to be a diamond on the end. And if we jam there, we have to hope they're calling down with like ace-10, ace-5, ace-4. So if they jam river, we're going to go ahead and drop this one. But if they check, we snap check. And yeah, so you can see they're bluffing there. Fortunately for us, they hit a king. But you can see there, they're bluffing the king nine of spades. So they're just going to bluff tons on the river. So fortunately, end up being good at the ace-jack. All right. So when that puts our profit at 442. It's just Kai's asking, or have you tried comparing stars and GG 200 NL? Uh, so I've actually never played on GG. So I'm a member of Poker Stars Team Pro, so I exclusively play on stars, and I've been team member Team Pro for a year and a half. Also, I live in the U.S. and I've never played on GG, so I can't compare the two. I can just say, like, the st I, I love playing on Stars. I think it's great. Even before I was an ambassador, that's where most of my action was, is at Stars. So it's not, like, a case of, like, oh, this is the site I signed with. So, like, you know, that's what I'm going to say. It's, like, I genuinely, when I had the option to play anywhere that has an option in Michigan, I chose to play most of my volume on Stars. So... I want to be okay like so the thought or i said i thought that was well played the only way you could take down the pot was the player yeah that's probably i mean like i said the only way we're probably winning this six out three bat turns jam there a lot decided to run it just didn't work out that time again i have that marked to look at because that's the spot i've been meaning to improve at a bit is like how to like turning those like smaller pairs in the bluffs especially on new high cards when they check Open here, defend big line, ace ten three. And go ahead and check turn. Could bet here as well. That's pot lose check call. Terrible river card. And checks down. And unfortunately, actually ended up being a good river card. So they turn two pair and saves us some money there. Reminder, today's stream is going to be five hours, uh, or a little under two hours in. Next two days should be seven, though, 5 p.m. to at midnight Eastern Standard Time.
Deep here against Kakish. Uh, about 200 bigs effective. We'll put in the 4 bet. See the fold. Seen a big roll in over here. So James about uh three and a half X pot. Haven't seen the action at this point, but big pot potentially. Let's see the call two pair versus the king nine. Jack Tun's good. Three bet jacks here get called and go for the big bet on 10 8 2. Take it down. Raise eights here, big blind defense. And go for the C bet here for third. Let's see a call three of the turn. Uh, let's see. I think can get worse to call here. Obviously, set their self up to get check raise, which would stink. And then river check the two, lose to queen 10. A little bit thin with the eights on the turn, but decide to try and go for it. Flop is set in a three bet pot here. We're going to check raise. Pretty wet board. So this is blind versus blind. Check raise the set. Get called at nine of the turn. And then going to go small in the turn here. Three. So a quarter on the turn. We have a few rivers we don't love, but. See the turn fold. Hey, what's up, Ridley? Good to see you. Crush it Mondays. I like it. We're going to see what we can do here. See what we can do. Button opens, threading aces out of the big blinds. And just take it down pretty quickly.
Check through flop, check through turn, bet river there, two pair, take it down. Cut off limps, or sorry, cut off posting, so they just join the table. Can have any two cards here. Yeah, we'll raise the suit at ace out of small blind, take it down. Raise king queen, big line defense here. Jack eight six two spades. Go ahead and check. Queen on the turn. All right. Get small bet. We'll raise for value. Uh, Joe, what's up? Good to see us. Are you going to be taking a shot at two five this year? Uh, it would kind of just depend on how the year goes, right? Like, I mean, I'm at a pretty good win rate this year, and I'm really happy with the results. Um, so I mean, if this kept up for like say like towards to like q4 so like the first nine months of the year i would definitely say i'd consider it like towards the end of the year um but we'll just have to see but yeah i've been very happy with the way that uh the year started at 200 for sure so also just depends on like the you know part of it would depend on the games running too so like for example right now oh it looks like there's three 500s now but sometimes there's one sometimes there's two just really depends value betting river over here see the fold it's tough with 500 though because there's going to be basically all the the high stakes regs play 500 plus so it's like you you, you start running into like the high stakes guys uh much more consistently than you do at 200. so you'll play against similar tables that you would see at even like 1k or 2k now the good thing is if you get to the point where you're winning in those 500 lineups then you if you're rolled for 1k 2k you can start playing those games as well realistically um but it's like that that first jump from 200 to 500 is pretty strong Raise nines here in the cutoff button. Three bets to a pretty healthy size. We're going to go for a call. Flop the set. Nice. Pretty wet board here. Probably going to be check raising. Uh, when they go this big, I, yeah, I think we're still just going to check jam here. We a lot of draws want to jam, so have some value. They're not going to fold ace, king, ace, queen here. So it's a bigger open size. Big bet on the flop. I'm just going to check jam. So I have like jack town or draws. I have ace, king. Absolute cooler setup. Just got to fade runners. Little scare on the turn there, but we do end up holding with the nines. Huge, huge hands. All right, so brings our profit to 713 today. Three and a half binds up. Raise jack seven suited, big line defends, ace queen, or ace ace queen, sorry. Go for small bet here. And see the fold. And pick up queen jack suited down here. Raise the queen jack, small one flats here, go for the bet king 6-3. Bet call, eat in the turn. 
Check turn here, five river. And it gets half pot in the river, let it go. So we have limp here, raise the queen ten suited. Couple calls, flop a get shot with the back door spades. So bet interesting turn here. So we're gonna bet turn here. We do pick up the double gutter, any king, any nine. It's kind of sad if they're playing jams, but uh getting two folds is great there, so we do capitalize on the fold equity. And then pick up kings over here. Three betting here. Get called queen six two. Pretty deep. So we start with a small bet. Call. Eight of clubs turn. Going to barrel again. Just hit the turn fold. So I continue to fold a little bit. Biggest stack at the moment is 635. We also got a 508 stack as well. So a couple decent sized stacks here. Open, flat, squeezing queens. So we squeeze, get called. 875 going for the check raise here against under the gun. So best bluff screen revolve around like jack 10, 10, 9. Uh, once it checks through, I think pretty clear turn bet. And just see the fold. Joseph said, pretty impressive results so far after you left your job to play poker full time. Is there any moments of thinking the decision was not right? Um, I mean, there's like little times, but it's never like I like sat for even like a whole day. Like, oh my gosh, like what was I doing? So again, I was, I was left, I left my job to, with the idea of becoming like a full time streamer. And, you know, the stream has been doing well, um, you know, continued to grow and felt pretty good with it. There's obviously like, I, there was definitely times like throughout it where I was like, I didn't know if it was eventually going to work out to the point that I wanted it to. And then would go back to like working a more traditional job within a couple years or a year or so. Um, but even at that point, I was like still happy I had tried it. Kind of like that thing where it's like, I don't really want to live with like the regret of not trying to go all in with it. Um, and give streaming a full time a shot. And I felt like pretty easily, like I could, you know, get a similar job again at some point, you know? So it's like, even if I didn't get the exact job I used to have, it'd be something pretty similar. So, but yeah, I, I, was, I felt pretty confident that like the decision I was making to try it was the right one. It didn't mean that it was going to work out like as well as it has though either, right? It was just that, like that at the time, the information I had, I felt like was a, a good decision to give it a go.
Button opens here, three bet the ace nine suited. So we get called, flop the ace here, go for bet. And heart turn would be a pretty bad turn. Carl check turn. That's here, not like super thrilled, but we'll call. Really bad river. And snap bats for roll fold. Hey, what's up, Fritz? Good to see you. Still over 20k, nice. Yesterday about even. Yeah, today was, or yesterday I think it was pretty close. Or not yesterday, I didn't play yesterday, but Saturday. I want to say it was pretty close even. Maybe it's just that I didn't play yesterday. Days kind of lose track of sometimes when it comes to the poker, but yeah, today's going well so far. Up a little over three buy-ins. Open ace two here, small bun flats, about the flop of top pairs. So Jack on the turn. And interesting river. So when they flat small blind, given their stat line, I don't think they have a lot of 4x. So I think we're going to try and target a sticky 9 or like a turn jack with jack x of diamonds. It's a spot where I'm going to have ace x that wants to go for value too, so. And we're going to want some bluffs, so go for the value to the fold. Nice. Good luck to you, Fritz, in the tournaments. Play a turbo or hyper turbo. If you make any deep runs or get a big score, let us know for sure. Raise take fours. Three bet king queen here. This is a hijack open from football. We put in the three bet. Let's see the call. Nine six three two diamonds. Uh, do have the king of diamonds? We'll go for a bet here. So if we're trying to look between like king queen o's that we three bet or bet, c bet and don't mostly want to do when we have a diamond and then not when we don't tens over here um button opens we three bet get called we'll check the ace six five two hearts here check check eight of hearts turn check and i was gonna block some rivers not this one i might still check call this river but ends up checking down and tens are good good reverse pocket seven so they turn the open under unfortunately for us missed it I'm gonna call this time just to note here as players jam the 40 bigs. Again, those like middling and short stacks, a lot of times cash game players don't value as much as like a tournament player would. So sometimes those can be like pretty wide jams. But first time we see it, we're not gonna call a 6 0. Raise the queen jack suited. Eight's over here. Don't 
Three by the eights, take it down. Premium time pickup queens. Raise and take it. Small one open, call the 6 5, flop middle pair, 10 5 3 rainbow. Goes for a pot size bet. Not thrilled against pot, but I'm gonna call one with middle pair. And then king of the turn. I would have considered folding a three there, whereas normally you wouldn't fold any pair to a C bet. And check the king, two in the river. Hopefully they just check here. Half pot. Because they bet so big on the flop, I think we're just gonna like overfold. If we technically if we want to turn to bluffs, like it's not terrible having like a pair or two pair blocker plus straight blocker, but I think for the time being just fold here. Open cutoff, small one flats, we flop the nuts here and get check raised. So some other flushes I would raise given their stack size with the nut flush will just call, especially in position. And then turn it's gonna depend on the size here. I think same sort of thing. We'd have some flushes that get in, but we'll call just call this one. There's going to be some rivers that kill action, but I'm just give them a chance to blast off here. They have queen six. So they flop top pair, river two pair. Ace high is, ace high flush is good. All right. Fun one here. Button opens, we three bet, they call. I'm going to set the trap with top set on the rainbow board. And then turn, go ahead and bet. The so check, check, flop after we three bet. Turn four of hearts. Calls four in the river. Uh, let's see. So block can induce some middling pairs. All right, yeah, so I'm going to go small to get those pairs to call still, like pocket pairs, 8x, and then also induce some blossom mist draws. Not 100% sure on this one, but we do block a lot of the 10x. I could just check this instead of blocking too, which I think is interesting. But decide to go for the blocks in the fold. Bet flop here, turn the gut shot, we're going to bet turn. And then if we get called, we'll bluff a lot of rivers where both flush draws miss. Uh, but one of them comes in though, we're just going to be giving up here. Yeah, especially when they lead. Open up short stack flat. We're gonna squeeze here. And both players fold. Upgrade from ace queen suited, ace king suited here. Takish opens. We or three bets, sorry. Some flatting, mostly four betting though. So we'll go for the four bet this time. Playing about $250 effective with Kakish. Ace king, ace king, spades. Another one. Nope. All right, chop it up. Seems fair. Fair enough. I 
think this was blind versus blind. So we're going to just call here with the flush, or the top two, sorry. And then check the turn, five on the river, so three makes a straight. Um, as play, this is pretty unbalanced, but I'm going to go for a block and end up valuing ourselves. No good versus queen 10. Button open, through bet nines out of the small blind, take it down pre. Hey, what's good, Davey? Good to see you. Davey Boy Legend with the tier one for six months in advance. Appreciate the commitment there. Thanks for supporting. Uh, Flamingo is asking out of curiosity, why do you prefer 2x instead of 3x? So it's just based on the pre flop charts I study with, so GTO Wizard, uh, depending on the position of the table. So under the gun and hijack, it opens 2x. And then cut off 2.3, button 2.5, small blind 3. So it just depends on like the position of the table. Uh, to an all ask, will you ever be coming to India for your fans? I don't have any plans at the moment. Um, I haven't done a lot of international travel in my life, but the the travel I got to do with Stars last year was definitely a lot of fun. So I went to Barcelona and I went to the Bahamas. First two times outside the country, except for going to Canada once, which for an American is like not much of a trip. <laughs> Especially when I, where I live is like an hour and a half away from Canada, but, uh, but it would be cool to go someday. I don't have any plans at the moment uh, to go to India, but if there's ever some Poker Stars event, maybe uh, get a chance to go. Cut off opens here, three bet and ace nine suited. So we see the call here. Queen Jack four, two diamonds. And go for the C-bet. Take it down the flop. Ace-4 suit over here. Four players dealt in here, so we have cut off open. We threw at least four suit to take down. Up right about four binds today. Uh, not going to hit a poker star's chest today. So it's going to have to be all from the tables, but so far so good. Three bet the king queen, take it down. Queen two suited by responds. I believe this player posted. This might be a limp, though. I think they posted, so we'll raise the jack nine. If it's just a limp, I probably wouldn't do this. Uh, but we do get three bets. We'll drop it. Is take the jack 10. Yeah, Flamingo is definitely different live and online. So, part of it with live is you're not going to raise to like two and a half big blinds or 2.3 big blinds with the chips and everything. Also, a lot of times live games are deeper, so it does make sense to go bigger anyways, where like max binds 200 big, sometimes even bigger, where it's like match the stack and can play huge. We're about to take it down.
Crazy Queens here, big one defends. King 7 3, two spades. Go for a small bet. Open three bet, drop the ace ten here. said played in barcelona a few times great city yeah it was super cool that was like that's my first trip ever to europe and uh i really enjoyed it we were like where the casino is it's like right on the sea which was kind of cool like a two minute walk to there and it's a cool area to walk around just the, the town we were there in like august too it was just like super beautiful and that uh, was really cool like i said i've never really had like tons of desire to travel um like internationally but i will say like a bit more after going to barcelona Bahamas, I was just at like the resort. So we were there at uh, Baja Mar for the PSPC. So I didn't really like experience like true Bahamas, right? It was resort Bahamas, but it's still pretty awesome. I mean, that was a sick experience, but just different from like the natural culture of a country. Whereas like Barcelona, I was like, like actually staying in a hotel that's in the city. And then, like I said, overall too, it was just a pretty cool experience. Uh, two and all asking who's your favorite poker streamer i wouldn't say I necessarily just have one you know for me a lot of it these days is like people i become like friendly with um through streaming so i don't watch a lot of streams myself anymore i did watch a handful of streams before i started streaming myself but uh these days it's probably like people I interact with so like obviously i have the other poker star streamers that i've gotten to know i think i've met them all at this point and then like you know talked and hung out with people a little bit too so it's been pretty nice like everyone's like really nice and welcoming and really kind which is cool and then you know other people too like there's some other streamers in like uh the u.s market specifically so a bit more like uh dr dad poker beam doctor poker you have ag nio they stream over in pa so i've like talked to them a bit more than a lot of others then there's like other streamers too that you know just over like uh the years i got a chance to hang out with easty in uh vegas last year i was a lot of fun with him and his friends we hung out uh, a couple days out there played uh played one cash game session together as well didn't really get any hands against each other but it's still uh, fun to be at the table and banter a bit. But yeah, and then like a lot of the other cash game streamers too. Like you guys know like CG and all those guys. Check out Weasel every now and then too. Um, so like I said, I don't sit and like watch a lot of streams anymore. So nowadays it's more of just like people I have like, you know, whether it's their cash game streamers, US based, poker star streamers. Kind of like a wide group of people. I wouldn't say there's just one necessarily. But that's been like the one thing I've really liked about like the different people I've talked to or met is like genuinely like all the other streamers like I've liked them. I haven't had any streamers where I'm just like, oh, I don't like that guy or something, you know, which is pretty nice, you know, meeting that many people and talking with that many people. It's like, pretty good odds that uh, there could be like someone that you just like, you know, you don't click with or vibe. But like everybody's been genuinely really nice, which is cool. It's a cool space in general. So opens, we've got takedown. Six is over here. Get three bet pre check, check, flop, check, turn. And ace on the river check. Hold on the ends. Raise king, ace, to big blind defense. Queen, queen, three. Ooh, ace is nice. Don with good luck wishes. Thank you, Don.
Under the gun open, three betting aces out of the hijack. See the four bet. So this formation's pretty strong. Uh, so we're definitely gonna have a bit more jams, but I'm gonna go for the flat this time. Flop top set, all right. Might be a little bit hard to get paid here, but we'll go check, check. We even have the ace of diamonds, which is great. Second flush draw comes on the turn. Um, gotta start betting at some point here. So if they check for a second time, we'd value bet. So we'll go for turn bet. And then hopefully there's check jam, that'd be great. Ideally, probably wanna see both flush draws miss. So that way also they just don't have any Although they might not have a lot of flush draws in this line. But then also they can put me on some more missed draws, like a King Queen suited, King Jack suited type hand. So we'll go small in the turn. Yeah, and then River's still a very clear jam. They can't have Ace X of Diamonds. I can't imagine they play King Queen of Diamonds this way. This might be a little harder to get paid. I would guess maybe they'd put me on more hearts than diamonds once I check flop. Um, but we're in a jam here. Hope they have like Kings, Queens, Jacks and decide to call down. You see the snap full in the end. Hey, Dr. Chi, good to see you in here. Thanks for good luck wishes. And yeah, session going well. We're up a couple buy-ins here, up about four. Four to four and a half. Things going the right direction as far as I'm concerned. Cough opens, we defend, check, check, flop, 10 turn. That's four, call turn, six over check. Check. Ah, that's six. Uh, four liner comes in, we'll go ahead and drop this here. Getting a good price, but no flush draws that miss. Could be a six spot to turn into a bluff. So on the site at the moment, 8200 game is running. Let's take 10 9 suited. Pocket 10s open this one next. Open 10s, couple calls here. Queen 5 3. For a check here. So bet's half, call one. Turn the set, but it brings in the club, so probably not check raising turn. Well, it's a little enticing, they're a bit shorter, but I think we'll probably just call. Now, when they go this small, 
It feels like it's less often a flush, so I'm going to go for a small check raise. If I decide to do this and they jam, we just call it off. This feels like a size that's going to check back river a lot. Um, obviously a horrible river card. Now we check. Where do we go? 10%. I'm actually going to go 10% here. And fold if they raise. And see the call get some value. Nice. On the four club board, I'm going to guess there's a good chance we could have jammed. Yeah, they queen nine. If on a non-club, like a brick non-club. But squeak out a little on the river. matter five hour stream today a bit shorter than usual about two and a half hours in tonight Jack opens here through at tens. See the call. Nine eight four rainbow. Go for half pot the overpair. So that call four on the turn. So let's sub four X. I'm gonna go ahead and check turn here. And then river. Really good river card. No new over card. Less likely they have a four. Against block, I would probably raise. And against check, we'll go for value. It does become kind of sick if he jams, but... So we would be losing to nines full, eights full. Uh, probably at least considers check raise those on the flop, but we bet there. Getters pocket sevens. Uh, two and I'll ask you how much of your rake back, or how much of your prize went rake back. For this year, I, I want to say it's like 5k or so. Um... But this command here in the Twitch chat will show you on the tables results from this year. So basically you would do whatever's on the tables and then the difference between that and the online results would be the rake back for the year. I haven't played any tournaments yet, so that'll change in April though when Coop gets here. Fun flop here, so limp pot, flop four of a kind. Given their stack size, I'm just going to be super greedy. hope they have some pocket pair and this is such an egregious river jam but we're gonna go for it Ooh, they lead even better all right hopefully I just turn to jack and just decide that they're just going for this so sick pot here so we're gonna be all in the four of a kind not bad getting led into in the river when you have four of a kind and snaps it off jack nine while they turn the jack sick all right king two is good so session continues to go well. Gonna be up probably for about five and a half binds after that one. Yeah, just under five and a half. So yeah, the nice thing when you play in sites with a good rake back structure is you can make quite a bit back through it. I'm going to open through back king jack suited, flop the king high flush draw. 
two on the turn. So I'm gonna go ahead and bet again. We're still gonna have the ace X that wants to bet on the two pairing. So some not all of it, obviously. Seven pairing, we have a lot more chucks, but anyways, take it down there. Fantastic, nice bet at the 10%. Yeah, I was glad that one worked out there. That's pairs one to one. I think we can have some like really small blocks there. So glad that worked out. Good to see you in here. That's test. Hope you're doing well. I'm going to step away for like a 60 second break guys. I'll be literally right back. All right, back in the mix here. All right, help if I had the uh, video capture back to prove it. There we are, back in there. All right, so playing the 200 NL grind tonight, up about 1100. Things going pretty good today. So going through the stacks at the moment, 710 the biggest one. Good number of games running the site right now. I've got nine at 200 NL games. And see football facing jam and asking if it's a pair. Gonna be all in here potentially if they want to call. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> Always enjoy some fun table talk. What did I have here? I'm guessing. Oh, I sat out. That's right. I went to the break real quick. And yeah, eventually folds. All right. So aces. Nice. Yeah, we get to put in the cold four. Also, a bit deeper here with buttons, so we'll size up a little bit. So I'll go to 3x instead of 2.5. I'm curious if, like, this deep I can even go more than 3x, but. Go for the 3x and everybody folds pretty quickly.
Right, so we have hijack open here, go for the threat at the ace five suited. Do the call, flop the ace five flush draw, alright. Not too bad, backdoor straight draws here as well. So we'll go for the bet here against Kakish and just hit the fold. Button open, defend the a6, flop top parries king four. Obviously the board heavily favors Kakish here. Both top sets in a range I don't have, top two I don't have in range. So if there's a flush out here, a lot of times people play big bats, but on rainbow, you definitely see a lot of small bats. I'll play that same way as well. Turn is where we can start facing some pretty big bats here. And these are spots I've been meaning to check as far as what my defense range needs to look like. Say if we start facing like pot and a half or even 2x pot. So for the most part, calling most of my ASEX at this point, as of now though. So we'll see what the uh, the old river brings if we get to the bet and a call. Obviously check check would be great here. <laughs> So it decides to go over bet. Uh, just gonna call one more here. It gets interesting if we call and then it's a spade and he bets river, where I could turn this into a bluff. All right, ace river, very interesting. So he ends up checking fortune. I was gonna say, if he, he can play some big bets here, he gets to be a really tough spot, honestly, with that weak of an ace, because it's still just a bluff catcher, but see the check back. Open King 8 suited, get 3 bets, go ahead and fold. Cut off opens, fend the queen jack here, ace nine seven. And then check check, two diamonds on the turn, check turn. Let's see, check down, lose the king high. Open queen eight suited, big blind defense here, nine nine four. And go for small bet. And get check raise. Not a huge check raise. Um am I supposed to call this here? Backdoor stray draw against this price. Less than three X. I think I'm actually going to float pretty wide here against this price. And then if we saw a check here on the turn, I would start bluffing turns on. So we'll do it here. Even though I have a bunch of nothing here. Uh, four on the river. Uh, let's see. Giving up just feels so sad, but I think we're going to. Pocket twos. Chop it up. They yeah, got counterfeit there. So we do have to worry about... They can have some, like, say, ace four if they don't three-bet pretty. They can, like, check raise flop. Sometimes it's, like, those, like, ace wheels and, like, the back doors, but... Let me just take it down. Or the chop. Queen 10 suited, we're gonna open, big blind defense, bat flop with trips, a turn brings a second flush draw here. D33 asks how many hands is the session is a goal? So usually I play for like a set amount of time, so usually it's like seven hour streams is kind of the most common. Today's gonna be five because I was doing some commentary on the Poker Stars channel before, so I started two hours later than usual, but usually like seven, sometimes eight hour streams. But uh, today, for example, we're going for five hours, and we're about two hours, 46 minutes in right now.
very clear river bet here. I'm almost wondering if I should be over betting this. Usually I just pot at the time, but this might be a spot where it's just like I'm repping a queen, so I should be playing over bet. But we'll go ahead and go for pot size there, take it down. Three bet, take down jacks. Check in the jack 4 4 here. Turns a 10, check the turn again as well. King River. Uh, do we ever go for a really sick check raise against bets here? So we block straights. I can have boats that would take this line. Like I'd play pocket kings this way. Um, and then I guess jacks or tens might bet the turn pretty often though. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fold here on the river. I don't hate the days of my bluff jam though. King queen over here, button open, small blind flat, squeeze in the king queen. Small blind only is $88, so if they found the the, the flat and then jam, we probably have to call that much money in. Especially because these hands can be so random, even against like a, a weaker ace there. Um, ace 10, ace 9, suited ace all the way down to 2. We're getting the right price. Pocket pairs, we're getting the right price. Ready to take the king 10 there. 10 8, fold this one around the gun. Raise queen 9 suited, take it down. So defend ace 8 here, king jack 10. Uh, Wagner in here. Good to see you, Wagner. Thanks for tuning in supporting. So far it's been a pretty good session. We're up just under 6 buy-ins. And uh, starting pretty hot today, a little under 3 hours in. King queen over here, button opens with three right, take it down. Queen six suited open, couple calls. King queen to go ahead and check. And eight on the turn. Go ahead and check. Uh, with them calling the weak queen, I'm going to go ahead and fold with big blind folds we call. That call set it to is very good there. And Kakish had a top pair, so yeah, we had worse hand there, king nine, with a club. So button opens, defend jack 9 suited, check the queen 5-5. Five, five. few backdoors here, so I don't hate the idea of check raising. I might do it here. 
I will say, like, sometimes it's better to have a hand, like, with an over. So, like, King 10 of spades is a little better with the backdoor straight draw. But King Jack would probably be a bit more considered just calling. So, don't hate check raising, but I don't think we necessarily have to there. King 9, King 10, a little bit better. Just because, like I said, the overcard equity for the times that they call and have a queen while still having, like, straight draws and backdoor flush draw. So take that down. Ace nine over here in small blind. Ace king on the button. Nice. Hijack opens. We three bet. So three bet get called. Flock top pair, top kicker with the backdoor hearts here. Go for the small bet. It's definitely gonna be some turns that we would check. Not like as much. Obviously, like a jack, a ten, a nine, especially if they're a club. None of those would be very good. But we just bet and take down the flop. King seven suited, open button, big line defense. Uh, D33 asks, any tournaments coming up? Yes, so actually I have Scoop coming up here. So I'll be playing the... Okay, caps lock on. Anyways, so I'll be playing the three Sundays part of the series. So it runs April 5th through the 22nd in the US. And then I'll be playing the three Sundays, including the main event, which is almost like always on that last Sunday. So I'll be uh, making my tournament debut for 2024. I actually haven't played any tournaments yet this year. I've just been really grinding cash and really enjoying the grind and... Results have been fun, which I, or good, which always makes it more fun, so. That's yeah, always, uh, but yeah, I, I get excited for Coop. I mean, even as a cash game player, like the prestige of Coop and trying to chase the titles, and I have to say, like, winning those two Coop titles on stream last year was probably, like, one of the best, like, poker experience I've ever had and one of the most enjoyable, like, memories I have, so. You know, I'd say, like, 98% of the time I'd rather be playing cash games, but there's no doubt, like, that deep tournament run in, like, in a prestigious series with a lot of money up top is just, like, you can't match that in cash. It's just that, like, outside of those specific moments, I always prefer cash. But man, those runs are fun. Got Hunter dropping in the Prime sub. Appreciate you, Hunter. Thanks for supporting, as always. It's a 27 months. Yeah, that's a long time. Good to have you in here. Hope your session went well. I was playing with you earlier. I don't see the tables right now, so I'm assuming I might be off at the moment. But yeah. Appreciate the Prime resub. It feels like yesterday, yeah. No, yeah, you've been around. Basically, that put you... I think it was like pretty close to when Michigan started. I guess Michigan's... But yeah, like definitely within the first year, for sure. I hope things are well. How much longer are you in Michigan for, for the, the Michigan grind? But our boy Dom, he got a huge finish last night. Today? Yeah, today's Monday. It's so bad how I lose a track of days. But yeah, he had a nice score yesterday on another site for like 11k. Second place finish. Here with Ace-King just gonna flat. Uh, definitely can 4-bet. Against 3-bet we're super deep. Decided just to flat here in position the hijack. And 4-betting completely fine. Ace-8-8 eight, eight, go for the call here. 7 on the turn. Uh, checks. I think pretty clearly still wanna be going for value. They'll have some 8x in range. But again they're mostly gonna bet turn. And then River. Jack-10 comes in. A lot of times people just barrel that again. So here we're trying to really go for value. Uh, versus like an ace queen, an ace five, an ace four, stuff like that. And end up having the same hand. That's going to happen to these small time. I think that line seems pretty reasonable for ace. King from our opponent. All my life for the stream. So yeah, we end up chopping there. Like I said, I could definitely put in the four bet there, but flatting reasonable as well. Hijack versus BB. Super deep. Open three bet. Just gonna fold the big line here.
Also, if you guys enjoy YouTube content, I did put out my first vlog with an editor today, so hopefully you guys uh, enjoy those. If you got a chance to watch it, I'd be uh, happy to get any feedback, things you liked, didn't like, indifferent on. Uh, but yeah, working with Adam, pretty excited for that. Um, he does a really good job, I think. So he's going to be working with the vlogs and the shorts. So the shorts I upload daily across uh, YouTube, Instagram, and I'll start doing TikTok. So I'm still, do, I got a backlog of shorts from the own, my own edits, but those will start rolling out on April 1st uh, from his edits on those. But yeah, pretty excited about that. Having him on board, I think definitely a much better quality. And then also saves me a little bit of time. I'm still doing a little bit of the editing to send him the hands a little bit more uh, cut down. Um, he helped me work out a good deal since I, for that, so excited about uh, working together on that but it's definitely gonna save me some time still too and like i said the biggest thing is the quality is gonna be better millionaire good to see you millionaire mojo it's a late night david is the best david and good luck thank you on the nightly grind so far going well right about six binds today sun run has been real today so far i should say so far this year in general too it's been a very good start to the year Open these eight, get three back, gun drop it. Raise King 10 called flop the nut flush draw here. Uh, pretty deep. King has a little showdown. Could go small. I'm just going to go for the check call here. Check, check preferred, but if they back call, it's a nice way to have the King of Diamonds in range. And then as played, we'll just be checking King high. Kind of like passive and sad when we just like fold river here, which I think I don't know. It's actually a good spot for them just to like bluff all their random hands, but we end up being good with King High. Good versus Jack High. Flop the open ender, small blind opens, we call. Jack 9-2. Face small bet, go for the raise in position. Hit a 10 on the turn. I think we're going to want to check turn here. And then river the straight perfect. Now we do lose the king queen. Queen 8, but obviously feeling pretty good with our hands. And bet small, I think. Raise here. This is so nitty to just call. Alright, I changed my mind. Make a really nitty just call. Same hand, chop it up. Not 100% sure I like that. So part of the concern is it's hard to get worse to call there. Especially when I raise the flop and then also like we can get jammed on and then we're in a gross spot against like King Queen, Queen 8 possibility. Bet flop, check turn, bet river over here. Six high. And see the fold. The 10-8 might have been real nitty versus block. Real, real nitty. Probably still want to target like two pairs and stuffs there. Oh, nice, Hunter. So you'll be here for a while then still through the end of April. All right, so you got a month and a half. Very exciting. So we'll see you on the grind a bit next month and a half. So now I guess I have to ask you, I know you've been out on the tournaments this year. Are you going to play any of Coop once it gets here? You need to wait and see the schedule. Maybe even just like the main event, even if that. Or are you just like, nah, I'm just not even looking at tournaments. Don't even, don't even want to acknowledge them. <laughs> All right, block the river here. Call flop, check turn. I think I got that right, or did it go check, check, flop? And if it went check, check, flop, and he bets turn, I hate the river pet, but I think it was bet flop, check, check, turn. If I remember correctly. See the call we did. Good or say queen. Let's play that, replay that hand to make sure I have that right, the action. Yeah, I called flop, but okay, yeah, so I like the block on the river. That works. D Little asking, gen uh, generally speaking, if you're quite good at cash games, most of the skill will translate over at tournaments, right? So some of it does, but I, we were talking about this the other day. I actually think as more and more good material is coming out these days, I think it's getting harder and harder to be good at both formats. So the tough thing, a lot of the advancements of like the study content available for tournaments is revolving around ICM and PKO and bounty tournaments. 
which for a cash game player are very unintuitive because there's no crossover, right? Chip or cash games, you're always playing in terms of chip EV. So like ICM is very hard to adjust to without studying. And then same thing with like bounty tournaments is just like a whole different consideration. Um, so I used to think that was the case up until maybe these last couple of years. I think it's getting more and more where it's like very hard to just only study one format and be able to translate enough to the other one. That'd be fair. Like, do I think I'm probably doing fine in like $30 coupe events or $10 coupe events? Like, yeah, I feel fine. But if we're talking even like the mid stakes, like 200, the 300s and definitely like the high rollers, like the 1Ks and stuff, like I'm definitely gonna start struggling at those. Now the good, the thing is like, I would say a, like on coupes, it'll draw a lot of players. There'll be a lot of people satelliting, qualifying in. And then also like the Sundays that I'm playing, the, the major Sunday event on any site, but especially like these like stars, like coops or like the Sunday millions, like these usually have tons of value because people like take their shot in that tournament or they satellite in. So all those like Sunday majors, even if the buy-in's like a 300 for a main event, like I feel very good in, especially if, if it's not a PKO. PKOs, I just in general really struggle, but, uh, but yeah, I think less and less is translating these days, but there's still some things that carry over for sure. So for me, it's, I think that's kind of been part of too, is what's uh, like last year, I still played mostly cash obviously last year, but I still played like a lot of tournament days during coupes. I played 30 days of coupe tournaments last year, including the fall where I played all 18 days and I played maybe like five or six other streams too. But I think it's kind of led me to more even like, you know, kind of seeing what's out there and like thinking through to more of like, okay, let's just like really focus on what I do well or do better between the two at least uh, with cash over tournaments. And just like really try to focus on getting better at cash and improving and keep that the focus for the stream but you know put in a few tournaments because again like even as a cash game player like the prestige of like trying to win coops is pretty big kind of similar to how for live players like obviously it's not the same dollar amount but like wsp bracelets people are like go after so like a lot of live players they might play cash all year but they'll play a whole bunch of bracelet events similar to me where it's like i'm gonna play cash all year but i'll play like a good number of coop events to try to win a coop title because like I said, with the, the two coupes that I won, like that was that was probably the most memorable experience I've had from poker is winning those two events on stream. Like that was just like so awesome. Um my two biggest online tournament scores ever. And then just like again, prestige of winning coops, particularly like trophy events. Like I have two trophies from which is pretty cool. But uh pretty interesting turn here. So we're gonna go ahead and call. Unfortunately, don't improve on the river. And then I don't think in a bluff with the spades, but maybe some other 10-8 combos turn into a... Actually, probably would more want to use like an 8-7, seven, 7-6. Seven, blocking more straight draws than just one. Not blocking like the, the 10 where we miss uh, block miss draws too. Queen 10, Jack 10. Sapphire said, it seems like you're running hot today. Yeah, we're running pretty good. <laughs> we're running pretty good. I definitely uh, cannot complain here. Nami asks, why you always run hot? <laughs> Um, I wouldn't say that I necessarily always run high. I feel like I've been running pretty well this year, although I actually am running below EV for the year. Again, that doesn't account for everything because card distribution can't be factored in with that, but uh, overall, I do feel like I've been running pretty well to start the year. But yeah, today definitely running well for sure. I'm gonna check the nines here on the river, lose to the trips. Value betting river over here. Uh, let's see, checks down to the river, we're going to value that second pair. And see the fold. But yeah, it's not like I'm running way below EV for the year. I want to, I can't remember what it was in the most recent update. Maybe 1k under EV. Exclamation 2024 on the Twitch side if anyone wants to see it, but running a little bit under. Hunter saying no coop here, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, I kind of figured you're probably in no, unless maybe the main event. I thought I'd ask. Yeah, it's just like it's and then the other thing that's hard for me too between balancing cash and tournaments is just like i can't play both at the same time it's so hard for me to focus trying to do both so like i can't play like two tournament tables two cash tables like it just throws me off too much but there's plenty of people that are fine with it hunter said he might have sundays just be off days to keep the temptation away <laughs> fair enough yeah that's when it's the most tempting to cash game players right because even like, you know, Dom, he's like, he'll only play on Sundays if there's like big stuff going. But like, other than that, I don't, I can't, I bet, I can't even remember the last time he's probably played a non-Sunday tournament. Unless he plays a few during Coop, I just don't know. But my guess is he hasn't played a tournament on a non-Sunday online in who knows how long.
Hey, what's up, Zone? Good to see you. So glad that you're having a strong start of the year and keep it going. Thank you. I appreciate it. I am very happy as well. It's been, uh, especially after last year, I struggled a lot at the beginning of the year. Things turned around later in the year, but still wasn't, uh, you know, tournaments, you know, speaking of not being great, tournaments not playing a bunch, actually saved my years last year. So it's nice to have such a hot start in cash games to start the year off. It's a full turn over there. King nine on the button here. Hijack opens three bet nice eight suited. So we three bet call, flop the ace here, go for C bet. Bet call, we turn two pair, good news. Bad news is it's a spade. Uh, I'm trying to think with two pair if I still go for this here. I think we're going to. Gotta be a little bit careful on these, but I think like even ace queen I would check here. I don't know on this. This is maybe supposed to be a check. It just becomes a disaster. I mean if we get checked yet, we have to call this point, but not loving it. And then we go for value here on good river cards. So basically non-spade and yeah, this is kind of annoying. It's so hard to find bluffs in their spot, but we do beat it's not gonna be six suited flatting. I mean, what's he? I'm actually gonna think about this for a second. So the problem is like under the gun versus this makes me feel worse about the turn back because like I'm trying to think here. He's not going to have 8-6 suited opening hijack calling. He's not going to have a 6 so he's not going to have a worse 2 pair. The bluffs would have to be like Queen Jack, Queen 10, Jack 10 of hearts. Which people I just don't know that they find here. Yeah, I'm actually thinking about making like a pretty ridiculous fold considering I bet turn here. So this is the problem with betting turns like we get in the spot and now we're just like 2 pair doesn't feel good. I mean, I guess just bet fold, right? Because we don't beat a single value hand. This is just such a sick spot to find a bluff in. Like I said, the turn can be a check. All right, I'm going to fold two pair here. Like I said, given the positions at the table, it's just like they're not going to have a weaker... If they had a, Like, let's say he did flat a six there. I don't think he jams turn. Anyways, so... All right, we'll let it go. Go for the big four bet here in position. So we're playing pretty deep. So playing about $475 effective. Oh man. Four bet pot deep and we flop trips. This is absolutely beautiful. And I think on paired board, we can go bigger size here when deeper and four bet pots even still too. So we'd go pretty small the, the shallower we are, but I think half pot's fine. Given the stack depth here, this might be incorrect. Uh, but we just see the full, which is really sad. So anyways, huge flop though. Hilo saying, so mostly cash plus shot taking high stakes tournaments High value, yeah, exactly. Like high value tournaments are probably, uh, you know, it's not really like shot taking for me because I don't really play huge buy-ins. But uh, you know, I'll, I probably won't play anything higher than three hundred during coop. I played up to one Ks in the uh, the last coop, but again, I was kind of like going way more uh, tournament heavy during that coop than I plan on going this one. But yeah, that fall series was sick. I played all eighteen days. I was plus forty K on the series, <laughs> which is insane.
So I made 35k in tournaments last year. So I made 40k during that two and a half week stretch and then lost 5k the rest of the year. But like 40k of my 57k profit last year came from two and a half weeks of tournaments, which is just ridiculous. So cash games was pretty disappointing last year. I was basically rake back grinding, but I did better in the second half of last year than the first half. And then obviously this year is off to a really good start too. Open, button flats, squeezing ace king suited. Yeah, let's see, two call of interesting. Uh, I'm gonna go for the check here. Thought about betting out. I think a board we can do a decent amount of checking. Uh, with the backdoor flush draw, be calling against most bet sizes here. It does get interesting. If the, if the button calls, I actually think we start folding, but if button folds, we call, so pretty passive line at the ace king suited here we'll just check fold or yeah check fold problems are still some reverse applied odds of like ace jack king jack suited so when it goes bet in a call i think we just let go out of position two jack nine jack ten suited they both had top pair on the flop All right, a little bit more folding. Biggest stack at the moment, 668 over here. Deal asking, do you have any plans to increase your income specifically from playing poker, as in like moving up stakes from 200, just wondering how people in general become extremely wealthy from cash games? So yeah, I mean, to make like, start making like crazy numbers, like, you know, into the six figures and stuff, like would have to uh, move up in stakes probably for myself. Um, it's not something I would completely rule out. You know, this year started very well. I pro probably want like a bigger sample size. The tough thing is in this player pool, it's a pretty big jump to 500 because like the high stakes regs play 500 plus basically most of them. And some of them get into 200 games, but not necessarily a ton. So it can be a, a pretty big jump. Now the, the big advantage is if you go to 500 and you can start winning at 500 is that the pool at 500 versus like 1K and 2K, I believe is kind of similar. So like the... Jumping up to 500 may not seem like a huge benefit from like the financial perspective because like there could even be a scenario where I'm making less than 500 even if I had a win rate at 500 which I'm not sure I would. It's so like let's say someone makes one big line per 100 at 500 but they make three big lines per 100 at 200. They're actually making more money at 200. The variance is like way way lower. Two and a half x the buy-in at the higher stake plus like the win rate so the buy-in swings are bigger even just in terms of buy-ins. Maybe you should call there. But the huge advantage is if you could get into the 500 games, do well in those, and then you have the role to play like 1K and 2K, then you can get into those spots. Um, that can be pretty good too. Now, the thing is you're not going to get a lot of volume at like 1K and 2K, um, probably. But if like they ran and, you know, it just really is like, that's the huge, that's the most appealing thing to me about 500 is not necessarily like trying to make a lot more money at 500 than 200. But the idea that like, if I start doing well there, then I could, you know, fire in like a 1K or a 2K game too. Uh, button opens here, and to see the defend, bet top two, ace, ten, eight. Bet call, huge hand on the turn here. So we're going to go for the over bet on the turn. Get raised. All right, so this is very strong when they raise. <laughs> But I think we get worse hands to call off here. Hope they have like some ace four, some 10 eight, ace eight. Obviously, sometimes we're just behind sets. If they have like a big combo draw here, like I don't see them folding. Um, so yeah, just gonna get it in now. 
pretty strong ranges at this point. I think this board's wet enough that I don't want to just flat this. Do you see the fold though? Maybe you could make an argument for just flat. Just because it's like so strong, but the stack's depth is getting a bit shorter there. So over here we're putting the cold four bet the s5 suited so we have open three bet we cold four and take it down kind of curious on that um east 10 hand the more i think about it now because then maybe he starts folding like those weaker two pairs whereas if i call and yes like there's some rivers we don't love but i don't know there wasn't much more behind there made it like what 80 with like 100 back if we're like a lot deeper where the spr still maybe like you know, point eight to one or something, maybe more some more flooding, but got yeah, Burton. Chaps up, Burnt. Let's see, and uh, asking going up to WSP again. I haven't decided yet. Not a hundred percent sure. How about yourself? Better fold here. So yeah, if I do go, I was looking at two different uh, like windows that looked kind of interesting. So there's one where there is like six straight days of a a WSP bracelet event had a buy in between four to six hundred. I think it was like the last week of June. Or there's like a fun stretch uh, during the main event that is like there's like an 800 Independence Day event, a 1K freeze out, and then I want to say there's like a $600 event in there too. But so yeah, if I go probably one of those weeks, either, I think it's like the second week of July, maybe towards the beginning of July's first or the end of July's first week, um, or that last week of June if I do go. But I'm not 100% sure yet. I've kind of just been like really on the online grinds and like the stream grind and cash and it's always tough with streaming like i always get so paranoid of taking breaks which is probably not good because you just have to have breaks in life and stuff but streaming is like very unforgiving with taking breaks and when you stream lots of days in a row like it can be it can do really well like the stream has done so well to start the year when you combine the twitch and youtube numbers seeing like a pretty big increase like just twitch alone has higher viewership plus adding in the twitch side or the youtube side Plus the factor that I even switched time frames, which I thought was going to be more of a hindrance at first than it was. So yeah, I just like things been going so well, I'm like afraid to take a break, but you gotta have some breaks. So now it's just kind of like trying to balance out the breaks, right? It's like how much do I, because I have other things outside of poker I want to be away for, right? Like I, if I go visit my parents for a few days or do some trip with friends. So now it's just trying to like pick out like okay what poker events do i go to because i you know the first thing i'd probably go to is like stars live events it's like i'd be more likely to go to stars live event than wsop so it's like is wsop one of those things i maybe start cutting out i don't know yet but does anybody else have uh plans for wsop thinking about going out there play some cash maybe some mtts uh todd gives some feedback on the editing so are you so you're saying kind of indifferent todd what was it that you either liked or didn't like with the editing because we're still kind of working through our process could maybe call this but we'll fold being deeper um but yeah so we're kind of open to like suggestions recommendations from people get a feel obviously you can't do what everybody wants because not everybody wants the same thing but open to suggestions from people and tony's asking is this your daily work uh so if you're asking like this is my job yes so i'm a full-time poker streamer J Poker asking how many tables playing. Got four tables at the moment. Usually playing four when I'm playing cash. So raise ace three suited. Get through about super deep here, my call. Glad we did. Two pair. All right. So not a flusher out there. I don't think gonna check raise the flop. And then we'll bet the turn though. So we're gonna bet turn. So a lot of times I'll over bet here, but I think it's the reverse thing when you get like deeper like this because you're not trying to play for stacks on the river, you actually go smaller. This is a weird river card. <laughs> uh, I think we block here with two pair, hoping he has like checking some back some like ace kings, ace jack, ace 10 suited, like weaker suited ace x here. Maybe see the fold in the river. That maybe still calls river. Kind of a weird spot when the four liner comes in and the club. Uh, to be fair, I mean, I guess we both can have like ace five in range. I guess I, if anything, I have a little less ace five because I'm probably not going to bet the turn very often with that. Um, unless I, I guess I had ace five of clubs, maybe would consider it to build the pot, but. 
Uh, Dickerson is asking what is the the labels. It just means a friend of stream. So if there's an N on there, it's just like the site set up for note. So for hunted here, you can see it's just his Twitch handle. So Twitch or YouTube handles. So I don't have any like player notes on people as far as like how they play. It's just all like friend of stream stuff. All right, defend here. Uh, Burnt said likes a flat versus the over bet there. Oh, like, yeah, especially when they, like, I was thinking about it too more is, like, the range. Like, he raises against my over bet. We're talking about the ace-10 hands. So, yeah, it's, like I said, I gotta check that one. But it's just, like, raising range against over bets in general is thin. So if I jam against it, it just looks, like, so incredibly strong. And probably can start folding two pairs. Whereas if we just call and we get good rivers, we get the stack. So, like, maybe let him off the hook. Now, again, sometimes we just get rivers we don't like. But, yeah, it probably just had to be a... I wouldn't be shocked if I was supposed to just flat there. First, the check raise against overbet. Oh, nice. Burnt going to be out there for the main event, so be out there for the start of the main. Love to hear it. What's your, uh, are you playing any other tournaments or bracelet events or are you just playing the main and then some cash games? I'll definitely try to play the main someday. Be on like the bucket list to do sometime. I've just like, I've never sold action before. Like I've literally always played for 100% of my own action. The idea of dealing with the tax considerations, everything just doesn't sound appealing to me, to be honest. I also hate the idea of playing with other people's money, even though like, I feel like I would just sell it for face to try to give people good value and still feel bad about it. Which is really stupid to a lot of people probably, but like it just like to me would be like weird playing with other people's money. Um again, it's super common in poker, right? Like people back and stake all the time and buy pieces, but then dealing with like the tax situation as far as like getting the right forms from everybody and I've always just kind of been in the past I'd rather just play lower stakes and have hundred percent of myself. But I think the main, if I was ever going to have an exception, like that would be the event, right? That would be the event to uh, sell for and pretty common that people do. Like I said, I don't have any, I think like selling action, it makes sense. Like people doing it. I just like, for me, I just have this like weird paranoia with doing it. I know it's not really rational, but... To be fair, like, I think most of the time people are probably better off playing on their own, but, like, exceptions like that where you can get extremely good value, but it's, like, an insanely high variant spot for a big buy-in. It's also a bit tougher for me because it's, like, I'm just a cash game player, so it's, you know, of any tournament, like, the ca the main plays most close to a cash game, but the problem is when you get down to, like, the last 100, 200 people, it's going to be really tough, and it's going to be shorter stacks than we're used to. But even for tournament players, like, they can struggle at some of those stacked ups because it can be, like, 70 bigs effective where it's, like, they've played that, but not nearly as much as they have it like 20, 30 bigs effective. Alright, it's gonna be a jam here. Ace King Ellen Pre calls Jack's flip. Ace and a king. Got a fade of Jack and a queen. Nice. Alright, good run out there. We're running up here today, chat. But Burn, I'm kind of curious on your thoughts or anybody else in chats. We were talking about this the last couple of days, it's been kind of an interesting topic to go over. I think that the more and more information comes out for studying i think that there becomes a bigger and bigger gap to being good at both cash and mtts and like less applies to each other so like at cash games for example like we're getting a lot more information on how to like size hands and like play different streets finding over bets whereas like tournament players are really going to struggle with that different boards are using big bet sizes in cash games versus tournaments and then tournaments like there's a ton of more knowledge coming out about like icm and um bounty tournaments because bounties are becoming way more popular too which is like two things that don't translate well for cash game players so i almost feel like in today's day and age it's becoming more and more ideal to like really specialize and again the main event's like an exception where you can play it you know because it's such good value a lot of people say it's like okay you take your shot in the main it's a deep structure tournament like play it a little bit differently and like have that go but like it's getting harder and harder to justify playing like decent volume at both games. I feel like if you're purely based on or focused on profit. Get four back here. Uh, I'm just going to flat king jack suit in position. I do have a few backdoors. Backdoor equity becomes a little bit less valuable when the SPR gets lower. It's so like three bet pot has less value than say a four bet pot. 
and it gets half pot full. This is another one I've been meaning to study. Some of these boards here, I've been noticing a lot more regs uh, using like half pot and format pots out of position on these types of boards where it's like these 10 high jack high boards, wet boards where they're probably not betting range. This is a spot I've been meaning to check instead of just betting like a lot of like quarter like a lot of people have in the past. Makes me think there's something up there that I've got to learn and learn the heuristic of. <laughs> Dex making a good point. I was saying I play only four tables when I play cash, but he says only plays four tables when he plays cash, but he only plays cash. I played a lot of I played a lot of tournaments during Coop last year. So it's like basically just like two, two and a half week stretches. But I played I streamed 30 days of uh, the 36 possible, I think, with Coops. 30 of 36. This year's gonna be a lot lower, but this year I'm planning on six out of what will be probably 36 or so, but Dickerson asking, would you consider using label or would you recommend using labels for beginner players? So yeah, I think it can be good. You don't need to be too crazy with it if you just want to have two colored labels of like one color for people you think are good players and one that are bad. Like that can be helpful. I don't do any tag based on ability. If I was off stream, I definitely would. It's the one thing I don't utilize on stream like I would if I was off stream for sure. I would definitely have a, a pretty extensive color coding system, but not like, you know, anything absurd, but I would probably have like good reg, weaker reg recreational and then like bad recreational so i probably have like something like four colors right so your your best regs you're not as good regs and then like i said the next one be like more casual players but then and then you have like one tag for people that are just like being completely out of line and ridiculous so i'd probably do something like that Dixon also asking, and also, would you recommend playing in the process of learning poker? I want to play, but I'm nervous about losing my money. Yeah, so I think the kind of the way I would suggest it is I think that the nice thing with online poker versus live is the barrier to entry from a financial perspective is way lower. So if you want to play live, like the low stake game would be like the game I'm playing, $1, $2 buy-in or blinds, and then, you know, min buy-ins probably maybe 80 or something. But the thing is when you want to learn poker, like you, I would, I always really high rec highly recommend having hundred big blinds, at least when you're buying in. Cause like, that's what you're going to want to be at to like maximize your earnings when you get better. But that's a lot of money for a lot of people, right? Like 200 bucks when you've never played poker, that's an expensive learning process and you can lose a lot of money quick. Whereas online, the great thing is you can play one cent, two cent blinds and have $2 buy-ins, which again, like you can still add up and everyone's financial situation is different. I'm not going to sit here and say like blowing $80 or hundred dollars is good for everybody, obviously. Obviously never good to lose money, but I'm saying not everybody can afford to do so. Um, but that's a huge benefit of online is that especially when you're learning, you can play for like a much lo lower dollar amount. The barrier to entry dollar wise is way lower. Uh, people ask about the delay. Yeah, so I have a five minute stream delay. So everything you're seeing now happened five minutes ago. So that way people I'm playing with don't see my cards in real time. They can obviously see my hands after and, you know, hear my thought process and I'm going to give up some EV doing that for sure. But it's not like they're seeing my whole cards in real time. Button open, small one, three bets. We called four bet here. Button folds back to the small blinds. This would be a call it off for 100 bigs in the situation. Dax aces running into it. Both of us have a club, unfortunately. I was hoping I had the club for your roll. 
and no luck there. Jack's still good. Lose a buy and back. Sell up about 1.3 today after that one. Can maybe three about that. Uh, Ghost is asking, do you see yourself moving up in stakes? I mean, it's definitely a goal in the long term. It's just, uh, in the, again, in this pool, it's just so difficult because there's such a big jump from 200 to 500 because all the high stakes regs will, like their low game is 500. So you start playing with like some of the absolute best players in the state. Uh, where you'll see some of them get in the 200 games, but not like regularly and not like at all your tables a lot of times. So it's, it's a pretty big jump. But like I said, the biggest benefit to potentially doing 500 is that getting to the point where it's like, if I can win in those games, I can probably win in the, the 1K, 2K games, you know? Like if you're winning at 500, there's a decent chance like there's not much of a jump and because it's a lot of the same players right and it just comes down to, like people being having the role to play it so i think like that's the most appealing thing of getting in the 500 it's not necessarily that i think that there's like a because again it's going to be you're gonna have a lower win rate of 500 than 200 um and i think there could be scenarios where you could be winning in both but you actually be making more money in 200. The biggest benefit though would be getting to the point where you can play those 1k 2k lineups when they run and they're good um if you have the role to do so all right, so check, check, flop, call, turn, four on the river. Call pretty quickly here. All the sevens, unfortunately. Really saying, talk about the difference between cash and MTTs, would agree the state and agents basically counterproductive to study both. Pick your lane and stick with it. Yeah, and I think that, you know, again, it depends on what your goals are, right? Like, I'm speaking purely from someone that's trying to maximize how much money I'm making on the tables, right? So if your goal is you're just having fun with it and you enjoy both formats, like, just completely just ignore what I'm saying. But you have to understand that, like, it is not as much as carrying over from one format to the other anymore, I don't think. So... It's a great thing with lots of information available. If you're willing to put in the work, there's, you know, it's never been easier to get better at poker and get drastically better quickly because there's so much information available. But that means that information is available to everybody. So if you're not keeping up, then you're falling behind, right? And if you're never learning it to begin with, you're way behind. <laughs> Hi, Jack Opens here. Three bet the cutoff. Alright, so see the call, queen 10, f5, go for the c bet. So that call, two on the turn, going to bet turn again. King River. This is actually extremely nitty, but I think I'm gonna find a check with the aces. So we'd have to always calling down like Queen Jack, Ace Queen, which we block Ace Queen pretty heavily. Could improve the King 10, King Queen. I think we're most likely good, but the question is, does he call with those worse hands to make up for the times that we value on ourselves against a King Queen, King 10, slow played set of fives. So I'm gonna find a really nitty river check. Jack 10. So one of those spots there where he probably doesn't call River Jam. So even though we're most likely good, again, we gotta think about like what worse hands are calling once we triple barrel. I don't think there's a flush draw they missed either. They, they could put me on, so yeah. Anyways, find the check. And aces are good. Here he's asking, what are your thoughts on starting playing PLO? Kind of, I would almost put this in the same category as like uh, tournaments. Is like I would rather just really focus on one format and try to get as good as I can at it. And I have like a no starting base for PLO other than I've played No Limit, <laughs> so that becomes even more difficult too. Like it'd be harder for me to learn PLO than to learn tournaments, I think. So I think for now, just uh, staying away from PLO. I honestly just don't generally have much interest in it either. Like I could see myself throwing together some $10 PLO cash game buy-in streams for fun. I've done those like a long time ago, a couple times. But as far as like seriously playing it, I can't see myself ever getting into it. 
Also, it's just like a less popular game than uh, No Limit is, obviously. And especially because like I've built like the stream based on No Limit Cash. Like I, I just think it's a lot better from a stream perspective too, just to stick to No Limit. Again, wouldn't mind like doing it on a really rare occasion, throwing it in, just like not anything that I could ever see being like in the regular rotation for multiple reasons. Take it down. Yeah, and burn. I would have, and that's. I think that's a good point too. And again, I'm going to be biased, this, but I think it's a lot harder for someone that's studied in tournaments to translate to cash than someone from cash to go to tournaments. But it's still extremely hard for us to go play tournaments. <laughs> But I would, like I said, I would have to imagine if you took like the best, like I said, especially if, you're, if we even start talking about like the high, like I play mid stakes, but like, let's say you talk about start playing high stakes. If you had to do the best cash game players playing the high stake MTTs, my guess is they do better than you have the high stakes MTT guys trying to play high stakes cash. Both are going to lose in my opinion, probably, right? At least like, you know, maybe there's an outlier, but like the overall gist of them, right? Like if you put in a tournament player to play 1K or 2K on these games, or if you put in like the best cash game crushers to play like the 1k $2,500 high roller tournaments, a few of them will be outliers and winning still, right? Especially if like some of them do have actual like crossover and have played both, right? But if I'm saying you take a cash game crusher that's like not really studied in modern day tournaments, it's uh, they're probably like both on average, like if you take a group of 10 or so are probably losing. But I would say that the, the cash game side probably doing better than the tournament side coming to cash. But maybe people disagree. Like I said, I'm obviously going to be a bit biased because I'm thinking about it from the cash game player perspective. But I think both would really struggle like over big samples for sure. But again, as, as a cash game player, it's like playing occasional, you know, big value tournaments is different, right? You're playing like, it's not like you're playing like the Wednesday 500 or something. If you're playing like, you know, a Sunday main or even like the Sunday series high ruler sometimes can be a bit better too. But if you're just playing like a random high buy-in Wednesday you know, it's going to be tougher. Same with cash, right? You're playing on a Friday or Saturday night versus playing daytime on a Tuesday or something, you know? Hunter's saying, I need to get in the five card PLO streets. That's way too much, Hunter. Four cards has got to do a lot of convincing before we get to the five card. Hey, <laughs> Pograssi, do I think that uh, PLO every become popular over No Limit Hold'em since it's becoming more solved? People have been saying that for years, and I haven't really seen the movement towards that. The theory I think I understand as far as like games that are less solved have more potential, right? Is the general thought behind it. Um, I just haven't seen enough movement in that direction over a long period of time where people have been saying it for a long time, you know? Huge flop here. So we open, get three bet call, and I'm going to go for the raise in position. So we flop bottom set on a pre wet board. We're pretty deep here. Lots of straight draws, a flush draw. And just see the fold. Jack opens defend here but yeah kind of going back to like the term versus cash burn like you said like let's you take a high stakes crusher and throw them in like 50 and 25 and out like they're probably doing fine you take a the best cash game players and throw them in like 30 dollars mtt's they're probably doing fine i'm uh, just gonna check call here don't hate check raising too though Do I just check the king high or bad? I'm going to check here. These are spots where I'm maybe missing turning some hands in the bluffs, though. Particularly versus like third pot size bets. Anyway, see so the sevens. Uh, Millionaire Mojo getting some feedback on the editing. 
like the idea. Yeah, I appreciate the feedback, Millionaire Mojo. That's that's good stuff there. Yeah, any feedback for those of you who have seen the videos today? Good, bad, indifferent. Uh, kind of work in process, you know, progress. Like, I think overall it's an upgrade, most people would say. Um, but obviously there's be little things we can fine-tune to make it even better. So any feedback's good. I appreciate that, and thanks for watching it. Nick asking, how can we see the net one? So it's a window capture of my HUD, so I use Holder Manager 3. And basically what I do is I capture the portion of the HUD under, there's a section in Holder Manager 3 called Live Play. So I go to that and I click automatically refresh and it just captures that part of the screen. And then it just like automatically updates throughout. So it's a nice way to have the results for you guys. I get check raise here, we'll go ahead and call nines of the diamond, jack on the turn. Depending on turn size, gonna be calling it sometimes against 14, we'll definitely call here. And ace on the river. Problems if they're bluffy, the ace of diamonds, they get there with an ace. I don't think there's a river that we call very often. We have to be open for like King X or the King of Diamonds or something, but they pop the river, so we're gonna fold. Unfortunately, that point just kind of gets to a point where there's just not a lot of bluffs on that run out. Or at least not as many of the natural ones to find. Down here, open the ace jack. Couple calls. We're gonna check here on the king jack two, two hearts. So it checks through nine on the turn. Uh, let's see. Again, check raise has to be a disaster or raise in general. I think we still want to go for bat here. I'm all too. I'm not sure. I love this, but we can get worse to call. So we'll go ahead and see the folds there. I like it a lot more when there's no straight draw that comes in, but we can still get calls from like pair and gutters, pair and flush draws, stuff like that. Things over here. And the big blind over here. So this will be a cold four bet. I'm not gonna feel great if this player jams. They're a little bit shorter though, it's so like 176. Um, if cutoff jams, I'd probably find a fold. But with the button being the three better, and I think you would just be calling off jacks at this point. All right, so this is where things feel a lot different. So against these min clicks, if anything, this feels more nutted. Now, with that said, I'm not gonna jam, I'm just gonna call and only get on like over pairs. Probably just wants to full jacks here too, but uh, probably just have to call. Check, check, interesting. We're gonna check again. And then, I mean, we have a spade too, even if we're behind. I, it does feel like we're gonna get shown aces here some, but now it's just kind of hoping they have like ace king that sometimes I've seen people do are some randomness just on you know low enough frequency of an occasion. Uh, it's kings, no spade, and unfortunately the jacks lose. So pre flop there, like I said, it just feels gross when they click it. But I was gonna call versus jam. When they make it that small, I think we just take the flop and then I guess if they just have the over pair versus over pair, they win. But on like ace king and queen high boards, even like ten high, where it's like we can we'd lose the tens there. Where sometimes. 
most of the time it's just gonna be something nutted like that but there are occasions where it's just like something completely random enough from players with those stat lines but even then that did not feel good i think on the turn there if i had jacks no spade i would have folded but with a spade call but uh, again that's not really a spike just like plug in the solver because it's like not gonna be uh that's kind of just like more intuition in that spot but if they would have made it like 80, let's say, I might have folded, but decided to call for the 24 more and then take the flop. Here's a queen flat by the button. So check, check, flop, chop, turn. So bats here will call his queen of spades King on the river. And checks out the sevens. So we got stacked on the other hand. It's still up a little under six buy-ins though. So I would say things still going pretty well overall. Go saying, don't worry, Maryland will hopefully be passing a bill this year. <laughs> we can you can take my money. I mean, I hope more and more states get in just in general. Like, it'd be fun to play with more friends of stream, right? If more people can get in that can't right now. Um, and then also just like anytime the pool can get bigger, I think better for everybody. <laughs> Excuse me. We're to also talk about the 500 tables saying, depending on the time of day, it's also a bit challenging to get enough 500 plus tables from just the site. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think that when kind of think of the 200 versus 500 thing for me it's like i would have to so i would still be playing a decent amount of value but 200 and the biggest thing i've been trying to figure out is it's like is it worth seeing how i doing because then if i do okay at 500 then i would be set up to potentially play some 1k 2k games when they run it they're good so that's like to me that'd be the bigger value it's like i don't think i would see an uptick in uh like if i start playing 500 necessarily an uptick in the amount of money i'm making even if i even if i find out i'm winning in the games i'm not actually convinced of that right now especially if i play like most of the games like i think there's a, a chance i'd be losing um and then even if i were winning there could be a scenario where i'd be making more money at 200 than 500 <laughs> but like the biggest appeal of the 500 is a it's just like the challenge too right like i'm competitive and want to try to play higher stakes and get better um and it makes me a better player you know playing as better people but then also the biggest i think advantages of like getting to the point where i could then sit in if i got good enough where i could sit in 1k 2k lineups comfortably um from like a skill perspective that's the upside that like 200 doesn't provide so but again even that's not gonna be high volume right check raise on the flop here to three bet pot uh, a few straight draws out there we're just gonna call the kings in position very good turn card and I think this is a turn where we just get it in. If we see bets. Yeah, these are spots I mean to get a little bit better, but I think this is okay. And just see the fold. Maybe more of a thing in single raise pots there for like the equity denial on like turn bets, but decided to get it in there. And you see the fold. Scooter with good luck wishes. Appreciate you, Scooter. Aren't saying PLO. PLO. Yeah, people want the PLO, just uh my my bank account doesn't want the PLO. <laughs> I'm saying five cards ridiculous and it's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, I mean, four card PLO is crazy enough. I can't even imagine starting to figure out what to do with five card. The Blasky, where's the trophies? Yeah, I gotta get... So I've been kind of looking at... I'm thinking like... So I'm gonna have some time off the next couple weeks. I'm only streaming Monday through Wednesday. The next two weeks, I'm taking a lot of time to watch the NCAA tournament. But in some downtime, I've been thinking about trying to look into the ideas of getting some like poker based art like kind of in the background and then also like some lights 
maybe making the room dark with the lights here, but the rest of the room darker, and then get some like lit up colored lighting to put on the ground and like kind of like you'll see with some other streamers. I think it's always a cool look instead of like the white background. So I've been looking at uh, potentially getting something like that. But before I make any big changes, I want to look into that and look at my options. So kind of been waiting for this couple week uh, stretch where I'm going to be streaming a little bit less. But nearby, I do have the Coop trophies. I always love when someone gives me an excuse to show these. I act like it's like, oh, they happened to just be here. I'm like, nah, this is great. I get to show these so I can prove I won two Coops uh, last series and trophy events at that. So not every event gets trophies, but I won two in trophy events, which was pretty sweet. So bet flop here with King 10, three on the turn. So probably playing over better check in this spot. And I think, again, this is against our opponent, you're playing 52% hands. I think I like over about to check rivers that we don't hit a 10 or a king on. Let me see the fold. So when you're over betting there, especially when you go three quarters flop, we have to be pretty narrow. So maybe like theoretically going three quarters, we don't want to over bet that hand. Whereas if we go third, we do just because the range is wider there. But I think versus our opponent's stat line, that's probably okay. Like last what solver do you use? So I use like a web-based one. I use uh, GTO Wizard to study with. So session so far so good. Up a little over six buy-ins. EV we're running like 50 bucks below EV, so nothing crazy. Obviously card distribution wise gotta be running pretty good today at this point. A little under four hours in, I'm gonna be streaming for five tonight. So I got the later start. I was doing the uh, commentary over on the Poker Stars channel with Nick Walsh for the Sunday Millions. So we'll still end by midnight here, probably. Um, potentially I could stream like an extra hour, but for the moment, planning on five. But we'll see how I'm feeling. I'm actually feeling pretty fresh right now, still. Sometimes, like, if I do like commentary and stream in a day, it takes a lot out of me, but. The Sunday Millions coverage was actually pretty short today. They went through the tournament pretty quick. But I'll be streaming the next two days. That shouldn't change. That'll be 5 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time the next two days. And I'll be offline for four days. So the next two weeks on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday streams, but no streams Thursday through Sunday. Uh, I think probably the week after that will be probably five days. But then the week after that might be back to like three again. I'm not really 100% sure yet. I think I might go visit my parents, not this weekend, but the weekend after while watching the tournament. So they live about four hours north of me, so I usually need to, uh, don't want to take like two days to do it, but usually make like a four day trip out of it. And then I'll be back for Coop Sundays to start up. All right, check river here. Uh, Todd said try one of the uh, one of like wallet table the 500. I mean that could always be a thing too. Like play one 500 game and three 200s. I think for me it's like if I I'm kind of like an all in or out out person. So it's like if I'm gonna get into playing 500, like I want to like get the volume in and play it right. Check raise here against the two dollar bet. I think this is okay. It's maybe a little too thin on the all hearts. We get called here. We check just about any turn though. So we'll check this one. So River Queen here, just going to check the river as well. I'm not sure of this flop check raise, by the way, but ends up working out for us. We win. Good versus pocket nines of the heart. 
Hunter saying Sparty first weekend in exit incoming. Yeah, I mean, there's a good chance they'll be out. How do you think Michigan's going to do? What do you think about their draw in the tournament? Because they definitely made it, right? There's no way Michigan would just like completely miss the tournament, right? <laughs> I, can't even finish, I can't even finish my trolling without laughing. Oh, man. To be fair, you guys won the Natty in football, but man, was that basketball team bad this year. It was pretty embarrassing. Dom and I went to the Michigan State at Michigan game, and man, your crowd was... That was embarrassing for a rivalry game. The no-show from the crowd at that game was, uh, man. Made Michigan basketball fans look pretty fair weather for a rivalry game. And we were getting the go green, go white chant going in the stadium. I mean, that was just sad. Never seen that at Michigan State. Never would see that at Michigan State. All right, raise take the ace nine suited. Three bet time with the ace king. All jokes aside, I mean, most likely the scenario is Michigan State's out first weekend, right? It's probably about a coin flip with Mississippi State, and then they'll be a big underdog against Carolina if they win. Open ace king, big blind defense here. Huge flop, top two on. Oh, it's three bet pot. Sorry, I was went pot size. Saying it's a single raise pot. Three bet pot here, we flop top two. So we'll go for third and just see the fold. I'm gonna open here, three bet is two suited. Old small blind opens, we call. Uh call a small flop bet with the Queen Jack. Checks turn, we'll check. River nine. I'll probably go for bet on the river. And I think we're using half pot, so I can be having ace x nine x here. Maybe supposed to big bet because we're trying to get them off chops too. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I end up losing to the tens. Not 100% sure on that spot for me if what size I'm supposed to use if I bet. Raise jack eight here, get called, bet the top pair, eight, six, three. So check, check, nine in the turn, check, turn. And we were two pair, nice. So this has been played, I think, pretty clear spot to go big bet. And see the fold. A seven over here. So we open, get a three back, go ahead and fold this. Ooh, ace is in the big line. Here we go. Ace, ace. Simple man that likes pocket aces and also likes three betting them. So got limp under the gun, cut off raises, we put in the three bet. And let's see. I'm going to slow play aces sometimes. More likely to do so when I have a diamond, though. So I'll go for the bet this time. 9, 5, 3, 2 diamonds. And see the fold.
You're about to take it down. Ace check over here, open button to go on defense, check it back. Got shot with the Ace of Diamonds, seven turn. Hunter joking, we have a basketball team? I mean, that's how Michigan fans acted. You guys acted like you didn't even have a basketball team by not showing up to the biggest the rivalry game. Oh, man. For how good your football team was, your basketball team was almost equally as bad. But yeah, they were pretty terrible. <laughs> Dead last in the Big Ten, right? Pretty insane. I'm not gonna lie though, selection Sunday, I was sweating. I was sweating, good value bet from the five there. Um, I was sweating getting in, especially when I saw Virginia got in. My friends and I in our group chat with them, I was, we were just like, oh no. Like as soon as Virginia got in, we were just like, that team wasn't supposed to get in. We got down to the last region and then it ended up being great, right? Like we got in and we weren't even one of like the first four games, which is even better, right? It's one last game you have to win. But uh, like at that point when Virginia got in, I was like, I don't even care. Just put us in the tournament. I don't care if we're playing. <laughs> but uh, getting in was great. Really happy that uh, worked out all right for us. I was worried. A little bit more folding, ace queen over here. So open, defend, go for the C bet. Here, uh, if you're going full, and maybe can call these for one. King's over here. Hijack open, cut off flats off a short stack, we three bet. Uh, see the call, goes call, call, flop, top set, super dry board here as well. Uh, I'm going to start with a check here to try to go for the trap. Ace on the turn. Uh, so am I trying to get worse to call? i try to go for the trap here. I'm not sure I love this. Um, my biggest issue would be... They bet the ace. So I think here for River to go for value, hoping that somebody has an ace they call, give him this check through twice. Maybe Pokey gets crazy out of line and jams. I don't know. So, anyways, we'll bet the river. See two folds. In hindsight, I actually kind of like betting turn. Especially when we're deeper with Pokey. If, if J make his heads up there because J makes so short, I like check, but I think I should have bet turn there. Looks like they're not mattering, but.
Silly me said, sometimes your three bets are 16, 22, and 25. How do you differentiate? Uh, it's just based on the position of the table. So if I'm on the button, I'll make it 16. If, unless they make it like six, then I'll make it 18 and be 3x. If I'm in the small blind, it's usually 22 unless I need, and they make it $6. $6. So then at that point, I go 24. And then if it, it's an open and it gets to me in the big blind five or less, I'd make it 25 against no flats. So it's just all based on the position of the table. Nothing to do with like the hand strength itself. Just wanna make sure you're balanced. Open, get three bets, call the queen 10 suited. What a flop. If anyone's wondering how good I'm running today, here's your answer. So now we're gonna see if we're just running good or super good, because I gotta see if we can get paid on this. So I'm gonna go for a bet here with the nuts. I can imagine small blind checks a lot of their range on this board versus me. Get check raise, nice. Okay, so I think we're just gonna go for the call here. There's a flush I'd consider jamming, but I think we'll just call awful turn card. It's gonna be harder to get paid. We chop with hands we are beating and we lose the king queen now. If they have like king queen backdoor flush draw. So I think. If they check here, I'm going to go ahead and check and try to make him turn like aces into a bluff on the river. So it decides to go small. We'll just call here. So it'd actually be kind of interesting to use kings as their bluff too. Um, let's see. King on the river. So I lose the ace queen. I don't know if they're check raising that. But pretty clear call if we face jam. Not the turn card we wanted. All right, and we're good versus Ace Five Bluff. Nice. So the answer of how good we're running is very good. So we end up being good there. All right, there we go. Open. We threw at the Ace Queen. See the four bet. I think mostly just flat position here. Um, interesting flop. So we do have a good spade. Small bets we probably just call in position. If we face check, I'll probably check back as well. So yeah, face small bet. And king on the turn. This is where it could actually be kind of interesting to use this as our bluff candidate potentially. So if I get checked, to, I'm probably gonna go small here. Right, so a quarter. And if we get called spade, I would probably actually check back. And uh, do you get the bluff through there? Ace five suited, put in the four bet pre, get called, bet flop for quarter. Check this turn, five of hearts river. Or jack of hearts, she's not even close. Five. Jack of hearts river. So given their, their big blind here, they probably don't have a lot of like seven, six, sevens or two. So it's kind of like we're just beat most of the time here or we're chopping with like and ace, I guess even like ace jack. Oh, yeah. Face the jam, it'll just be folding. Double paired board. Got hot funny in here. It said building my bankroll, learn from the best. Good to have you here. Thanks for supporting. Glad to hear the bankroll is moving on up. I want to talk about the Michigan basketball program. It's one of the fastest <laughs> demolitions of a program maybe ever. I know, man. Like, I was so glad when Beeline left because I just, I thought so highly of him. And, like, he was getting three-star recruits and turning him to NBA lottery picks. Just, like, it just always seemed to have great teams and, like, good, de like, good at least, like, start. You know, like, multiple good players and, like, player development seemed so good with him. So, as a Michigan State fan, I was so glad to see him leave. And then even Juwan's first couple years were all right, though, weren't they? I guess they were with Beeline's players, but just this year fell apart. Face the four bet here, pre, we're going to call these 10 suit position. And could float with the back doors, but again, at four bet pots and the SPR gets lower. A little less valuable than, say, in three bet pots, the float.
Raise Jack 8, see the big blind call, go for it back here. Big flop top pair with a few back doors, turn 2 pair, nice. Go for the turn bet, 10-9 does come in, but we're obviously feeling pretty good at two, two, top 2, and see the fold. Open, 3 bets, full king 10 suited. Folding and there he is, the legendary Arlie Shaban. Appreciate the raid, buddy. As always, the big raids coming on through. Guys, I'm sure you probably already know Arlie. If you somehow don't, though, be sure to give my friend a follow. Member of Poker Stars Team Pro over in Ontario. So plays in the Ontario Fence and Player Pool, similar to the US, just the province of Ontario, and is gonna have Coop the same time we are. April 5th through the 22nd it was announced. I saw it on Twitter coming through today. So for both. So super excited for that. Like I said, I'll be grinding the Sundays. I'm sure Arlie will be playing a bit more as an MTT at Grinder himself. And uh, the man has won, it was either five or six coops in one series before. Maybe I see Wee coming through on the raid. What's up, Wee? Maybe you can remind me what it is if Arlie's taken off. But it's like five or six in one series, which is insane. Excited for coop coming up here in April in the North American market here. Arlie's going to be a great follow for some MTTs uh, during the series then and just in general as well. So appreciate the big raid as always, Arlie. Hope you're well. Hope the session was a good one. You guys can maybe let me know how it went. I'd appreciate it. Like I said, good to see Wee in here as well. Hope you're doing well, Wee. For anyone new here, welcome. My name is David, fellow member of Poker Stars Team Pro. Play over in the U.S. Fenston Player Pool. So I play in the states of Michigan, New Jersey, and also play mostly cash games. So a lot of the star streamers you're seeing, including Arlie, are MTT grinders. I actually almost exclusively these these days play cash outside of like coops. So for like coop Sundays even. So. Playing 200 NL, we've got four tables going at the moment. White section below the webcam will tell you how we're doing. Up about seven buy-ins today, so I'm actually running really well today. It's nice, still, still got to close it out strong. Um, I was, schedule got thrown off a little bit today. I was doing the PokerStars commentary, so I was originally playing going 5 to 12. I didn't start till 7, so I was planning on going until midnight, which would be about another 45 minutes. There's a chance I might go to the 6-hour mark and go more towards 1 a.m., so we'll be on for either another 45 minutes or an hour 45. We'll see how I'm feeling. I actually feel more fresh than I thought I would after the day of commentary, so. I had yesterday off, so that probably helps too. I'm also only going to be streaming uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, so I think it might stick a little later. But uh, for those of you who enjoy the stream, I do post my schedule every week on the schedule tab every Monday morning. So I'll post my start and end times for the schedule. Most streams are usually like 7 hours these days. Um, and usually at 5 p.m. Might try some 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time start times coming up. We're a bit deeper here on double flush draw. This is maybe a bad fold, but I'll let go of the jack 10. We're, all, we're deep enough where that might be really bad when we're drawing to the nuts, even if some of them are going to be, you know, half more flush draws coming into. So I'll make the fold. I'm not sure I like that. It might be too tight. Uh, bean dip talk about the ace five versus straight hand so i'd imagine on the river i'm not like super great in these spots but i'd imagine you want to have an ace to block me from like the super long end of the ace queens like if you have to pick out some bluffs the ace five is kind of nice too because he doesn't block any of my two pairs or sets which is actually kind of some of what he wants me to have which sounds weird but those are some of my value hands that then might fold river so i i'd actually have to imagine ace five ends up being decent but i'm not 100 percent sure but that's like my initial thoughts um that it actually could work out because it's in a weird way like you don't want to block me having sets in two pairs because those are hands you're trying to get me to fold that played the hand the way i did because i called a raise on the flop right um so by the river there like having an ace not blocking sets or two pairs you got to pick out some bluffs right i think uh i'm gonna start seeing hands like that getting in there but again those spots are really tough to find the right hands and i'm not the best with it but i can at least understand what interest he's thinking in that spot with uh 
PS5 there. Millionaires, I just realized that we're up seven and a half behind. Yeah, it's going pretty well today. Going pretty well. Speaking of going well, we flopped two pair after we three bet pre. Ace Queen two, two spades, two on the turn. So this actually could end up being a pretty good turn card. I don't think they're gonna have a lot of two X here. We blocked the only remaining ace two suited, so they can't have any ace two. With the suits that are out there and in my hand. And then also if they have a weaker ace, they got ace and two of the queen kicker. So this actually feels like a great turn card. And we just see the fold. So even though you might, again, you might think first, oh, the board pairing, it's not your card's bad. I think that's actually an extremely good turn card. Because again, they shouldn't have any 2x there. Besides, maybe if they have ace two suited pocket twos, and they can't have ace two suited because the heart, spade, and diamond are on the board of either the ace or the two, and we have ace of clubs in hand. So, speaking of a lot of twos, we flop trips here. So, back, go for check raise. And sadly, get no action though. Bit more fold in. Queen 10 is going to bet flop. Huge turn card. The king on the turn will go for a turn bet. I'd imagine my rage wants to have a lot of checks, but I could probably bet it's here with this type of hand as well. J Mick getting pretty short here. It's going to represent a lot of J Mick stack. We get called mostly just don't want to see a spade. Prefer no board pair either, but I think the spade would be the worst. Queen or 10, not as good either because we start chopping the hands we were beating before, but given that stack depth, I think we'd want to jam any river there. Fold. Uh, we's confirming Arlie's was five on scoops. Yeah, I knew it was some. It was like something crazy. Like it sounds ridiculous even saying five or six in one series, but I'm like, I know it's some. I'm pretty sure that's right. That's just like an insane series. Open the king queen suited. Get three bet. We'll flat here. Check ten five five. Like I said, I had two last fall, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is the greatest coop series ever. <laughs> I just had two. I had forty percent of what Arlie had. And then I think he won either... I think he won one last series too, right? One or maybe two. But yeah, Arlie's an MTT crush over there. He's got a tracker going on probably tournaments he's won since they've had Ontario, and it's like some insane number. Working on a profit challenge right now, trying to hit 100k profit in Ontario. It's getting pretty high up there, so... Like, so if you guys like good MTT content, especially with Coop coming up, and haven't followed Arlie yet, I would definitely recommend following him. He'll be, I'm sure, on the grind quite a bit during Coop. And then, as I mentioned, for me this year, I'm going to be doing less. All right. I got the long end of the straight. Just call to river. Beautiful. So we're going to stack them anytime they have a 10. And otherwise, just hope they're bluffing or have a two pair. Uh, once they check, it doesn't feel like they have a 10 very often. I think I'm still going to get greedy and try and get them to level themselves into a call with two pair, though. For pot and a half here. Hope they put me on the spades. Maybe this is wrong where we get more like it called work, but they end up calling with two pair. They river two pair. Nice. So we get the max there with the S10. Beautiful. So they bet the turn, hit two pair on the river, we get them the pay. And win a nice pot there. Not a huge stack, but obviously a good pickup still nonetheless. Queen 9 suit opening, big one defends, a flop of the flush draw with the pair. I'm going to go ahead and bet here, checking completely fine as well. Decide to bet that time, take it down. If we have Queen 9 that's not hearts, I would never bet. With hearts, maybe still should be a check, but take it down. Raise ace queen suited, a couple calls here. Top top here, queen nine seven, two clubs and a diamond. So we're gonna bet. See one call over to H Den now. It's a pretty wet board, so could get start getting some tough spots against check raise. We obviously wouldn't be folding yet. And we did put it out in the universe and it did happen. So we're gonna go for check call here. Or not check call, bet call, sorry. So we'll call. And Jack on the turn. So we do see some straight draws come in. Some of their draws end up hitting a pair. So like could have like Jack 10 that's check raising, King Jack. So I think we just check back here. And then that's a bad river card, unfortunately. 
So if they had like a Jack-10, King-10, like all those types of hand beat us now. 10 makes a straight, backdoor club, or clubs come in as well. This is pretty miserable run out. I think we still just want to check it on the rare occasion that we win here against like 8-6, but... Um, it would be an interesting hand spot to actually turn our hand to a bluff now once they check. Trying to get like 9-7, Queen-9, Queen-7 fold. Alright, change mind. I'm actually going to bluff with this hand. I could have clubs playing this way too, so we see the fold. Because like I said, all those draws come in, and then the other thing is like... Yeah, I think I like turning that into a bluff. Because I'll have some clubs there. It'd be nice to have a club in hand, but... I don't think they're going to have a lot of clubs this played. And then now we're trying to get like King-10 to fold that beats us now. King-Jack that hits two pair, but with the clubs and four-liner coming and consider folding. Stuff like that. Sevens here, got under the gun open. We defend, flop a set, beautiful. Pretty deep here as well. Um, under gun open won't have 6-4 in range, so we have the effect of nuts. Gonna try and check raise turn here on the new high card. So stick to that plan. See the fold. So I am going to lead the river here. So I think I have more 6x in range. So we call small in the turn. And we are going to lead the river. And just see the fold. So we get him off a chop, which is great. Button opens here. 3 bet nice jack suited. Three back, get called, flop top pair, good start, he's king eight. And just see the fold. TNT Earth. As far as tables, like I try not to play at tables that are all regs if I can avoid it. Sometimes we're playing all reg tables, but that's kind of like the main thing. I just don't want to be on tables with all regs. Suited. See the open under the gun, defend Queen Ten suited, check the Queen Nine Seven Two Diamonds.
So call interesting turns. So we turn top two. It's a diamond, pretty connected board. We're pretty deep. So I don't think we want to be check raising here at all. Uh, we'll just be check calling queen 10. And then river, I think can go big bet once they check here. He's still gonna have like over pairs in range. Could even be checking if he opened like queen nine, 10 nine suited. Um, I'd expect the call. Queen jack might still call. Ace queen. Um, those spots get in tough spots, but definitely can call for sure. Has kings with a diamond, so you can see an over pair, like pretty mandatory call. And get some value on a good turn card. Raise ace queen, couple calls here. Go for the C bet with the gut shot to the long end of the straight. 10 in the turn, so I'm gonna go ahead and check this one. Oh, football. I didn't even catch that. He was against you. On the ace queen one? Yeah, yeah. That's a... Uh... Oh, no. You were you were in the small blind, right? Because I played the hand against h who's in the big blind, but you full of flop, right? Six is over here. Under the gun open, we flat big blind calls. Flop is set. Just going to call here in position. Pretty dry board, relatively. And then king on the turn. So this becomes a turn where they can start blasting sometimes, so I would probably uh, just call if they bet. Unfortunately, they check, though. A lot of times when they check a king, though, this can be a hand that's got some value that the showdown, so it's going to call here. And then four on the river, obviously a clear value bet on the river. So pop the river for value. Snap calls, set of sixes gets paid there. Good verse. King Jack, so turn top two. Very nice just check call on the turn there. There's a lot of times they could go broke against sixes. I kind of feel bad they didn't get the more money there. So even though Pokey lost that hand, I think very well to lose the minimum there. 7-6 uh, suited here. Check, check, flop. Check the turn to check call against pot. And over the straight. Nice. Don't hate the idea of like maybe leading sometimes, but we'll just call as played. As a six, we chop it up. Raise 92 here, big one defends, ace, king, and a seven, two diamonds. Just plan to check this one back. So if you're just tuning in today, stats below the webcam as always, and we are running hot is the update. It's up about 1.7k today. Turn the open ender here. Uh, if we hit one end of it, that would be the four liner on the low end, but I think still want to be barrel in turn now. And then a diamond river, I think, going to give up. This actually could be a kind of a fun one to try and get some King X, 10 X to fold, but I'm trying to think like what ace X would I be checking flop and willing to bet for three streets here. I think I'm going to give up, but maybe should bluff this one. So yeah, it's kind of a tough spot, ace three, if they face river bet. It's just tough because I don't know I'm going to have a lot of ace X that checks flop, but then wants to bet turn and river on that run out. Ace 10 seems like an obvious one, right? We could turn two pair with King 10. A lot of my flush draws are going to want to bet the flop there. Not necessarily all of them, though. So I guess maybe some of those. I mean, it's absolutely crushing. Yeah, today is going well. It's, it's just the year in general, the start outs, but it's been awesome. I mean, last year was such a tough start to the year. And then the second half went better. And then uh, it's obviously been really nice with the, uh, the start of this year. 
Yeah, sometimes you just got to get through the grind. You know, I mean, it's a lot of times gonna be a combination of things, right? Like it's maybe I was running bad for a stretch last year and I'm just running really well right now. So, you know, it's kind of the two extremes and the, the answer is somewhere in the middle. But check, check, flop here. We're gonna go ahead and bet the turn, see the fold. You know, I think switching to the nighttime streams, I think, is obviously helping the quality of the games as well. It's probably not a surprise. Um, but again, I don't think it's as big of a difference as like the difference in win rate we're seeing. So, you know, part of it's just going to be, uh, you know, catching some cards. And the all EV, I'm actually running below EV, like I said, for the year. But again, all EV is not everything because it can't account for card distribution. So, but that makes me feel even like better about this year's stats to be getting. Like, like I said, I'm actually running slightly below EV. Um, so to still be, you know, with these crushing stats to start the year. Again, don't expect that it's necessarily the rate we can win at for the year, but it definitely makes me feel uh, much better than I felt maybe like at the halfway point last year. But second half of last year was better than the first half. You know, I was doing better and things were getting better. And it's been, uh, like I said, it's just, it's nice to get the, the year off to a good start too. Like it shouldn't matter psychologically, but there is something about like a new year and it's like a fresh start and, you know, wanting to start on the right foot, right? Like you really want the year to start off well. Um, so if you have to say go on like a 6K downswing or something, you'd probably rather have it in December at the end of the year to wrap the year up rather than the beginning of the year to be behind early, right? Uh, at least that's how I feel, but. Opening aces from the hijack here, take it down. So this player we're just gonna set mine against their stat line over 500 hands 56 1 and 1 10 bucks uh into a pot of 48 so even if we have like an over pair on the flopper it's gonna fold this is purely to set mine with the implied odds i'm just gonna assume we get paid pretty often if we hit it and i'm not gonna try to like make them fold aces or kings on a jacks paired board so it's full here uh i just realized this table is not set up why is this not set up Ace queen, we open on the gun, small line three bets. We can fold this pre sometimes, uh, but we get a pretty good price in position, so I decided to still just call. And then interesting turn, bringing the second flush draw. Uh, checks to me. I think can go for value. And we see the quick fold. Did I not, oh, I didn't move this table right, that's why. Okay. I put a table in the wrong slot. I'm like really confused. I'm like, I thought I had that updated. Uh, big open, they're short. We're just going to fold. Football talk about the hand right bluff of the ace queen by the so just in a bad spot with the better raise. Yeah, and it's and especially too when you have I called behind too. So you like you have to continue like really strong hands or pretty strong draws, right? You're not gonna want to have a lot of medium strength hands or medium strength draws continuing there. So yeah, I'd imagine a lot of your rage is gonna want to be folding there. Limp raise, we fold. Let's 
So continue to fold a little bit. Uh, let's go through the stacks. We got a second here. 357, 204, 635, 409. Button opens here, defend the jack nine, check flop ace jack six. And face bat for half, go ahead and call. Ten clubs on the turn, check and turn here. And then do we turn our hand to a bluff on the river? Uh I think I'm gonna check this one, but I might turn like my six X or smaller pairs into a bluff and lose to an ace. Six is here. Button's pretty short. Thankfully, small blind folds because then I can just easily jam here. Oof. Didn't want to jam. All right, small blind. I need you to get back in so I don't do this. So it goes for the trap limp off about 22 bigs, and I completely take the bait there. There's no anti in play, so like you're going to want to be a little tighter at jam. So I probably wouldn't just like rip like threes, twos, maybe not even fours, but like fives plus for sure. Probably fours I jam too, to be honest. But the limp gets a paid. Hook, line, and sinker. You guys, how often do you usually lose at the end of a session? Um, I don't know. I would have to imagine it's definitely over 40% of the time, even this year. But I don't know for sure. I try not to like worry about too much like a win and loss, right? Like it sounds really cliche, but it's so true for cash games, especially. It's just like you try to think of everything as one long session. So I not I don't try to think of it as in like, oh, I won yesterday or I lost yesterday. Or I won today or I lost yesterday. It's just like, okay, how am I doing overall? You know, even breaking it down to the year, like it, you know, gets the whole big picture. But for me, it's like I just like to constantly follow like the yearly number where it's like a huge big enough sample, right? And not just like sweating too much on a day-to-day -day basis. So go through the stacks real quick. 310, 201, 627, 414. Running good, picking up some cards, winning pots. It's what you dream of when you log on for a session, right? Button opens here, threat sevens out of the small blind. Let's see the four bets, and I'm just gonna fold this. I'm going to open 3-bet and ace-queen out here. So we see the call here, go for the c-bet. So bet call. Uh, I don't think I'm going to barrels turn. So my best barrels might be like if I throw in like ace-4 suited here. Uh, club draws as well.
Let's fold the turn there. Here's Queen Jack here, get three bets. So I'm gonna way over fold this spot against player stat line 56, two and zero, or 500 hands. So we're getting a pretty decent price, they're a little bit shorter, we have a good hand to normally continue with. Maybe it's good enough where it can crack the big enough hands that enough there, but uh, I'll probably call like a bunch of my pairs. Uh, I'm gonna fold there. The pairs are like more immediate on the flop, whereas like you could flop the Queen Jack, but still have draws and have to get there. Nice, just cash two hundred dollar buying JMac off. Was that off that, and then you took the the money you won from that like free casino spin for it? Nice little uh, ROI there. I'm gonna fold the king there. But yeah, thanks. Cash game session going well. Still got to finish strong, but obviously feeling uh, pretty good about this session at the moment. Table. Right, there it is. Okay, I was gonna say it should be the right table. Flyers blind get three battle fold. Second flop here. After we open at 10972 spades. So it goes for the bat here, we'll check call. Turn two pair, nice turn card. So I don't think want to check raise. And then river. I'm gonna go for a block here on the end with the four liner coming in. Try and squeak out some value with two pair. Just hit fold. Yes, Tom, we're up a little bit under just under sixteen hundred dollars today. Yeah, it's been a good session so far. Good session indeed. Flop that here. Go ahead and call. Turn three check. Turn call again. Jack on the river check. Uh, I was trying to think about what properties we want of 9x to call. Let's see. I think I'm still kind of tempted to call if they bet river. This is maybe getting a little light, but I'm going to call here. And yeah, lose the jack on the end, unfortunately. Good flop, bad river. Not exactly sure what 9x I should be calling there, but I'll call down that one.
Open sixes, couple calls here. Check the king, queen, at five, ace of spades, turn. Christy, the good luck wish. Just appreciate it, Christy. Good to see you in here. Over here, we're three betting sevens. So it's hijack open, we three bet, take it down. Sixes, we lost on the other table, by the way, if I ran away too quickly. Yeah, it's been an alright session so far, exactly. Not too bad. Not too bad. Can't be too upset about it. Check, check, flop, bet, turn, and probably check calling river if they bet. See the full though. Button opens off a shorter stack here. We three bet the ace king take it down pretty quickly. Queen jack over here. down King nine here, three bets, cold call, we fold. King four suit over here, so we have button open, go ahead and defend. And glad we did, so we flopped trips. If they bet here, I'll probably check raise, try to target like all their over pairs here. And they pot it, so yeah, I'm actually probably just gonna jam this. Like, I don't want like bad turns to come for them, more so than worry about bad hands for me. So if they have a flush draw the call, then if they have like honestly any over pair, probably calls too. So we're just gonna check jam here. I'm gonna have flush draws. I want to do this, so we'll throw in the value too. You can just have calls, but like I said, if they have like sevens, I don't want it to be like a turn 10, or if they have like nines, turn ace, or something like that. So, anyways, they just end up folding, but I think I still like jamming that there, given their stack size. We saying 300 an hour, not bad. I wish I could keep it up. We, I wish I was capable of uh, keeping that hourly up. Unfortunately, not the case though. But yeah, definitely happy for today's hourly. That's good. Not too bad at all. Not gonna hear a complaint out of me about it. So continue to fold a little bit, ace-10 over here, open this one. Raising ace-10, couple calls here, 5-3-3, check and multi-wave. Uh, 3x most likely from the big blind. 
more so than us in the hijack checks all the way through ace of hearts river uh big blind's still gonna have some 4x too and then obviously could have been trying to go for the check raise on the turn so it does get a little bit dicey if they bat here multi-way um it actually becomes a good spot for them to try to bluff too for all those same reasons uh they check we're happy to check um, if hijack bets, it's a bit different, but we end up being a seven, and then good versus the other player, king queen. So I can a full little bit. Uh, five three over here and a full this one to cut off. Jumping down here at the ace queen. Off opens, throw the ace queen, take it down. Like I said, I was originally playing doing five hours after I was on the uh, coverage for the uh, Poker Stars event today. I'm feeling pretty fresh still, though, so I think we're going to go for another hour. So instead of going at, ending at five hours, we're going to go for six hours tonight. Go till about 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Still feeling pretty fresh, pretty good. Streaming the next two days, but I'm not streaming Thursday through Sunday, so we'll get the uh, next hour in two. And then, like I said, we had the late start today, coming over from the uh, Sunday Millions coverage. Pick up Ace King next to the button here. Raise Ace King, big one defense here. Jack nine at two, go for the check. Take the turn here, nine the turn. Walker, so that's the kind of profits I was hoping to see when I tuned in. Hey, appreciate you rooting for me. Yeah, it's been uh, six sessions so far. It's just been like running pure. Um, Aramith said, I'm new to poker, and I was wondering why you choose to see bets. Uh, when you flop sets, especially if top sets, the pocket pair, would you not want to check it a lot of them to bluff the turn? So a lot of it depends on how you're looking at your range. So there's going to be boards where you're just betting a super high percentage of your range, if not close to all of it. So that's it'll be kind of like how you want to construct your range, right? If it's a board you want to bet a super high frequency on, you're more likely to bet. Of your sets, like your top sets, the least likely to slow play, or the most likely to slow play, sorry, because it's going to be blocking their top pair continues to let them bluff for the reasons, like you said. So, like, for example, if a board is like 10 5 2, I'm more likely to check a set of 10s than I am a set of 2s. Um, but sometimes you want to, you know, you need to build the, the pot too. I'm going to find a check call here with 10s. I don't hate lock, but. Check, check, we're good. I mean, I guess I do miss out on some value. I'm like pairs at a6. Okay, that's the type of hand we're hoping to bluff, so. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure there. Not 100% sure. Uh, Walker said, 
enjoyed the latest video. How are you feeling with the new editor? I actually feel really good about it. I'm uh, I'm a person that's really bad at letting go of things, and I like can be very particular about what I want. Um, and also with the editing, like I have a an upload schedule where I post shorts daily, and then have like the vlogs like very much in set to be every Monday, Thursday. At this point, it used to be like Monday through Friday. So I was always like a bit worried about that because I'm like very, I would say I guess like kind of demanding as far as like these deadlines have to be hit, and then like I don't want them missed, right? Whereas I think a lot of uh, streamers when they post videos, it's kind of like they just post them when they have them, right? It's not like they have to post this day or whatever. So obviously it's like on me to get him the content in time, but basically I have a set time where it's like I send him for the highlights, like I send him a cut down stream of just the hands that I want in there, but like then he does all like the the special effects and then he cuts out like the dead time. So if there's like 10 seconds of dead time, cuts that out. So I'll send over a file. It could be like 18 minutes. He cuts it down. It's like a 13, 14 minute video with the effects and everything. Um, and then the new template and everything as well. So um, I, I feel really good at it. So Adam, he, uh, he does a lot of work with uh, stars us so like it's really convenient for me and it's like nice to have that like partnership where it's like he works with the site that i'm partnered with and then like too i've been able to get uh you know the fact that they bring him on to work with their stuff means that they obviously think highly of him and then obviously it makes like there's not like three different parties that have to work together on different things where it's like you know it's very much like the communication is really good and there's already like a Good communication and i have actually met adam in person too i got a chance to meet him out in vegas with at uh, the napt and i was really impressed with like i did like a shoot with him and just like everything he had set up and like his different ideas um just like talking to him and then i know he's worked with some other you know big content creators as well so i just felt like overall like even though i'm always gonna be nervous going into that like of all the pieces like there was just so many boxes that i checked the mark of like i was happy with it and feeling comfortable working with adam so i'm really excited for that uh, going forward and I, I think he does a really good job with his work too obviously that's a huge part of it too and I really liked that like when I was talking to him about the idea of doing this he was very much about like trying to look at like what do we do for me specifically and it's not like just like another cookie cutter this is what every other streamer does for posting so this is what we're gonna do like I've always kind of viewed this channel as I'm a bit unique so obviously a lot of streamers are gonna be tournament players I do cash and then also my you know my personality for content's a lot different than I think a lot of like traditional poker streamers a lot more poker streamers are definitely more expressive and i would say probably more like you know what would be considered naturally entertaining than i am whereas our, the stream here is like very much focused on the hands and again i don't play perfectly but like i try my best to and i do take like the game pretty serious and then it's just like a chill vibe too right like we we joke around about stuff but it's you know it's nothing's like too serious you know it's like a pretty chill vibe around here. So like, you know, even just talking about stuff of like, you know, my stream background music, I try to have chill music. He'd had the idea of like on this, you know, the highlights and stuff of like have kind of chill background music too, because that kind of fits the vibe of the channel. So I think the fact that he was good about that and then also was kind of an agreement to like really make sure we keep the videos focused on the poker, the hands and not have too many bells and whistles going around and like editing, you know, craziness. Sometimes what you'll see because for some creators, I think it makes sense and it can be really entertaining. But I think just like, the stream that we've kind of built as a community that's just not really the vibe that we have here right it's like i said pretty heavily focused on poker that just like a chill vibe in general so it's i like that we're kind of hitting that so we threw that pre-flop get called here flop middle set so it's limp raise we three bet they call can't imagine they have many folds here guys so we're just gonna get in a middle set hopefully this has like ace king or ace jack and just getting way ahead ace jack perfect 95 percent and they're dead on the turn. Queens are good. Uh, I think I made a bad check here on the King Nine on the river. So, well, I'm gonna check with Ace or the Ace and King rivers a lot, but I think that one probably should have about. Anyways, talk about the sets hand. We are saying like always bite your sets. Yeah, I would say in most scenario is like definitely right i think sometimes people try to get a little bit too trap heavy sometimes with sets it depends on the board and stuff and like again if you have like middle or, or bottom or top set but i think in general like if you just bet your sets all the time you can't really go too wrong with that like i said i think sometimes people try to get a little bit too fancy play syndrome myself included sometimes and maybe try to trap a little bit too much with them at times It's also different in like cash versus tournaments. Like tournaments, the stacked ups are shallower. Uh, whereas in cash, like you're trying to build big pots, um, especially if it's like a single raise pot. 
So that can make a difference too. So maybe a little more trapping if you're like SPR is like two to one going to the flop as opposed to like a single raise pot, right? Because you can still get the money and buy the river naturally without having to like check raise or raise a, G a raise a bet on the river or something. Button open series, see about the King Jack. To the fold. Open 9-8, big one defends here. And go for the big bets. Only issue is we do have the open under on the one end, it'd be the ace making a straight two, but I think fine to go for a big bet here. If we get check raised, we folding though. Right, so we had one game breakdown, so I am going to. In a 100 NL game. So I have three 200s and a 100. Then I'm on some wait list as well. Or raise the limper here with the ace queen, get called top top on the flop. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we'll go for back here. And see the fold. So twos here, flats. I'm uh, just gonna fold the jack down four two clubs. JRS, why do you prefer cash games, not MTTs? So I actually started poker as an MTT player, funny enough, playing like micro and small stakes. Uh, so the biggest reason I transitioned at first to playing more cash is because of the flexibility of the time of day to play. So like I was in college when I started playing poker, really. Um, and then like, you know, especially even getting into like the working career more. Also live in Michigan, before we got like state regulated sites, there's just a lot more live cash options of like one, two, two, five, and not as many like good tournament options. Um, live terms at low buy-ins are raked really high. So it's cash games, but it's like really hard where you're playing like an $80 buy-in and, uh, you know, you're going to rake the ton off it. So that was like kind of part of it. And then I think over time, as I played more, like there was a long time where I actually preferred tournaments over cash. Like I just thought tournaments were more exciting, but I think as like I dove into poker more, especially these last like four years since I started playing online more again, um, I think I've like really fallen in love with cash and just like, you know, trying to improve in the strategy portion of it. 
And I think MTTs, it's it's hard because the advancements in the strategy these days, a lot of it's based around ICM and bounty tournaments. And I just don't know them very well. So if anything, I get a bit more frustrated sometimes with tournaments than I used to, and I just feel a little bit more lost. Um, but again, it's my own fault, right? Like I just don't stay up to date on tournament study, but it's because I put a higher priority on cash. And I think more and more, and kind of I talked about it for like this year, how I'm kind of how I'm seeing it is like, I think very clearly I'm way better at cash games than tournaments, despite how lucky I ran in Coop last year. So I think at this point, like I just want to kind of really like zone in and focus on what I feel like is my best game. And to be honest, the game I prefer more. But uh, I still enjoy tournaments from time to time. And like I said, with Coop being here, like I still love the Coop events. The most fun I've ever had playing poker is still winning that Coop. <laughs> those two coops last fall like that was just such an exhilarating feeling and just like so exciting to do it on stream and you know have the insane run that we did especially after last year it was pretty rough um for a lot of the year up until the end and like the second half of the year cash so it's uh like the two percent of the time where you're in a deep tournament spot in a big event you know if even that when you're playing to me is so enjoyable but then like the rest of the stage i think i just prefer cash i like the deep stack structure as opposed to like getting really studied at like ICM and short stack play and so yeah I think a lot that's kind of like a handful of different things that have gone into it For the three bet here is the limp button raise we threw at take down. Jack 10 suitor, open button, big line defense, check raises. We'll call it the gut shot back to our diamonds. And then if we get checked to, I'll probably check and then I would consider bluffing river. But if we place bet, we're just gonna be a fold. Aslin, yes. <laughs> Holy cow, good day so far. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a huge day up about 1700 right now. Been running very well today. Very, very well. Catching cards at the right time. So with all that said, I haven't played any tournaments this year yet, but I'm actually really excited for Coop for this Sunday. So like I said, I'm not going to be doing that like full out series grind like I did last fall, but I'm really excited for the Sunday grind and trying to win another Coop title, right? That was, uh, those two wins was super cool. Caught off opens here, three bet the king queen. Let's see the four bets. Just go ahead and drop this here. opens here three of these kings suited take it down and then, oh shoot just hit enter and th min three about eight five suited he's gonna try to hit fold and i hit enter all right well this could end up being a hilarious hand here so we flop the gutter with the backdoor diamonds so i go for the bet yeah meant to fold this before anyone yells at me why my three bet ends up making us money but Misclick makes you money. That's nice. A lot of times misclicks cost you money, so we'll uh, take that. Nice when they actually make you something. Small my limps here, race king jack three handed. Let's see the call. Queen three, two, go for the C bet. And see the fold.
Raise, get three bets. Um, I think we'll call this one. Continue with both two ace hacks, maybe fold like ace six, ace two. Decide to call a three, ace nine, eight, two diamond flop. And face bet here, just go ahead and call. And queen of hearts, river check, or turn, sorry, not river check. Jack 10 comes in. But with an ace here, probably just calling turns. There's gonna be some interesting rivers. Um, obviously, blind range is gonna be a bit wider as well. So I would imagine on complete bricks, I'm actually pretty tempted to call down with the ace three here. That's not a brick though. So I'm trying to think of my range if I'd have some leads. I'm not gonna do it this time, but I wanna take some time and just be balanced here because I'd have some leads. Uh, turn some of our diamonds into a bluff. Some of my, I'm gonna have like leads of 10X. So we're not gonna call if we face bet here. Um, but just saying like, I think my range could be playing some leads. River Jam, I'm just gonna unfold. So again, timing wise, I'm just trying to make sure I take like all my hands that way, both hands that I'm actually considering buttering and some I'm not. Like when those four liners come in, spots where there's a flush draw that misses at least. So especially with two flush draws missing, there's be spots I just like turn those into bluffs and then like have the have the 10 for value too sometimes. Obviously, to make sure we're balanced there. So I do think a spot where we can, you know, again, my value range would be just the 10 in that line, but I would have some missed flush draws I would uh, start bluffing to as the lead. So that's why I want to take some time there because I'm going to have um, some leads there on that one. Check call the flop in a limp pot over here. Yeah, the table you can't see. Probably be helpful. So check call flop in this limp pot, and then check check turn. We'll bet river. Clubs come in, but we have two pairs, so I think clearly good enough to go for it. See so the fold. Decent flop over here. So cut off opens. We're gonna flop the boat. Queen queen six. And I believe we're just gonna be calling this against bets. So go ahead and just call. Two of hearts turn check. Please have a flush. So same thing on the turn here. I'll just be setting up for a check call again. Uh, river five. I'm going to try to check raise river. The spot when I check, I'm like pretty capped a decent amount of times. So I want to have some strong hands in here. And then also try to build a big pot against uh, the ace of hearts or the king of hearts here. Sadly, doesn't take the bait. At ace 10, very good check of the 10 of hearts. Definitely makes me feel like I like missed some value there. Unfortunately, pull ass is this your main job? Uh, yeah, so I'm a poker streamer full time. People ask what I do. Yeah, sometimes people ask, like, you're a professional poker player, and I'm always like, eh, it's, you know, a bit different. It's because a lot of the uh, focus on, like, the content side, too. It's a bit of a mix. I definitely take the game seriously though and try to be the best I can and try to have good results. And I, th I truly do think that the better I am at poker and the better the better the stream will be. So kind of all ties together in that aspect. Uh, Cole, I do answer. There's just a delay in the chat. So there's a five minute delay in the stream. But yeah, nice to hear that you're up on uh, casino poker. It's good to hear. Up some money on the year. Always a good way to start. For sure. The direction you want to be going. We get three back here. Go ahead and call. And then interesting turn. So this does make it where I think I catch triple barrels as over pairs. I uh, block one of the jack 10 suited. Small bet or just check? I'm just going to check here. I don't hate small bet though. I think if he bets small that we actually get to raise this. 
And if he checks, we have a very clear value bet. Try and target some of those smaller pocket pairs. Ace King that just thinks I was floating and taking a chance to steal the river, which would be reasonable. Uh, but we end up being good to get some value there with tens. Good risk pocket eights. So yeah, that's the type of hammer hope for most. Worked out well. Start bluffing turn here. Or shoot, I have a pair, I don't know I'm betting. <laughs> Oops. Uh, like, check that. Anyways, alright, they follow. We just win the pot, whatever. We'll dig it. Saw the ten of hearts, forgot to check the other card for the pair. Oh, man. Pretty deep here with Kakesh, we're gonna flat with 3-bet. Yeah, that's half pot, call 1. Ace on the turn, check. Yeah, but small on the turn, it'd be pretty sick to turn this into a bluff. Fair thing of like, what other properties I maybe want to have. Oh, let's see if I call like King-Queen, King-Jack of Diamonds maybe. I'm gonna fold the turn about there. See the cold call. Alright, so I'm gonna use this a four bet this time. And see the button fold back to the small blinds. Small line goes call call. So I go for quarter here. Do I have the like, ace of clubs? And then four on the turn. So the question is do I try to make them fold tens or jacks by the river? It's like really goes. So I think second flush drive before that pot, I'd probably be playing jammer check now that I think about it. So I probably want to check here. And then six in the river. Pre flop, I maybe should be using more like ace jack, ace ten suit, not ace queen o here a little deeper, but ends up having jacks. No good for us. Three about eights here. Pre flop, get called. See about the flop, ace ten three. See the call at nine on the turn. It's a bad check here. And nine river. Not gonna love spades coming in. Do you see some of the straight draws miss? King Queen, Queen Jack, King Jack. So against block, I'd be kind of tempted to call, even if it's not like the best to see a spade river, but um, anything bigger than third here, we probably just fold pretty quickly. I guess for half, I'm just gonna drop this still. Maybe at least consider a little bit more with the eight of spades, but. Well, 
plus do like live or online better i prefer online so i mean especially these days because I, I enjoy streaming so i've been streaming for a little under four years now about three years eight months or so but i really enjoy streaming so i don't have that aspect of when i'm playing live and then i think with online the thing i really love too is like it's just way more action so i'm playing maybe 400 hands an hour here instead of 25 to 30 hands an hour so that part's more fun and then it's just also way more convenient too so i can just like you know log on and play online um instead of having to drive the casino get money get chips wait in a longer wait list than online is going to be all that kind of stuff Three at the ace five suit here get called check and flop on the jack nine six and nine turn check turn Four. So, okay, what kind of hands could I go big bet for value? Jack, Jack 10. Oh, do I get folds from better here if I go block? All right, I'm gonna go big bet. I'm not sure I love this. It's kind of a weird spot. Maybe you should just check down. Maybe do you see the fold? I'm not, I'm not sure on that one though. So basically saying I have queen jack or jack 10 maybe. Maybe some frequency of King Jack checking. Maybe tried to check raise the flop with an over pair it goes check through and then a nine turn we check. Could be another one we go big bet to for value. Three betting sixes here get called three two two. Go for bets. Check raised. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and call one here. I would think he must be a little careful. Check raising this board. So I'm gonna have like aces, kings, and queens in range, which I don't expect him to have. He's basically saying three fold or ace two suited. Quads two, quad twos. If he calls like threes and twos pre. So I get small, but I'm actually gonna call one more here. It's getting a little bit sticky, but 10 on the river. And then, I mean, it does, I guess I'm just like kind of very tempted to just go crazy hero call mode, but I think if they find the triple barrel here, I'll fold because I'm going to have some hands that are still calling down river, turn the king, maybe a better pair than sixes. Could be sick, like if he turned like sevens or eights into a bluff and I called and lost, but um, it is kind of an interesting run out though. Oh, geez, I'm about to call, chalk myself into a call, aren't I? Actually, no, I think I want to fold sixes. So the thing is like sixes block like six, five suited. Whereas like sevens, so maybe I'll call like sevens, eights, jacks. Um, you could still have like ace five, ace four. Man, I still just want to call, but sevens does feel significantly better than sixes here now when I think about it. So the range he's repping is extremely thin. He's check raising backdoor flush draw, it misses. I guess I wish I had sevens. Just repping so thin. Wow, we're still good. We're still good. So yeah, I like I said, this the that's the problem with calling me sixes is because we blocked like the six five. He still had it there. I know it ended up working out that time, guys, but so I have to hope that there's enough like ace five, ace four, backdoor club stuff. Realistically, I maybe should have folded that, but called like my sevens and eights. Um, the nice thing is we didn't have a club, so for that exact thing, right? Maybe he starts giving up on the turn if he doesn't have clubs. But I uh, end up making the huge hero call the sixes, and we're good. As I mentioned, I'm gonna want to look at that one because maybe that's like call sevens and eights, give up sixes. But if we're gonna have sixes, they call at least we don't have a club. We'll take a look at it. All right, a little bit more folding. All 
They're asking what advice can you give on taking a shot move up stakes. Yeah, so I think the biggest thing is just like having a set amount that you know you're going to take the shot for. Don't be like, eh, I might play if I lose 10 buy-ins, 20, 30. Like have a, a set number and if you fall below that, go. So that way you know what your bankroll is and you're comfortable with going with. And then the biggest thing is making sure you drop once you hit that mark, right? Because I think that's a huge issue that people get into. We got pre-flop here, open flat, we squeeze calls. And then let's see, a four on the turn. I check jam this. I actually don't mind just jamming myself, even though the pair's there. Check the river. Check, check, we're good. Whew. All right, so plus 1870 today at six is one, it's one of the bigger, the lighter calls I've made in a long time. Like I said, I'm, I'm not sure on it. Sevens and eights are way better probably for that exact reason. But if we have sixes, at least we don't block the backdoor flush draw too. And the thing is, if they have like quads or threes full, a lot of times people will just call those too. So it just becomes like literally ace two suit if they flat that pre as far as value hands and then all the draws miss. And then it's like, how often would they like turn a bluffed king high into value in that line? I don't know. But there's a chance that was just like really bad on my part and I got lucky that I was good that time. But I guess I was trying to hope for like ace five, ace four, uh, five, four, six, five, like they had. Even if we block some of the combos. Uh, this is a weird one here. I think we're going to call, but definitely have to be a little bit worried against Kakesh here. So checks through flop and he raises the turn once I bet. He definitely can have flushes in range here. Uh, if he decides he's just like range checking these monotone boards multi-way. So if he decides to bet, I'm actually going to fold the river here. This is maybe incorrect, but into two people with one player being pretty short. Yeah, king high flush. Nice hand from Kagish. It's not actually really sick on the turn for me, but I think we can call and just hope we're good just enough. And then also like there's times where the board pairs and that we're good too. Ace jack over here, open cutoff, small blind, three bets. We go for the flat. Uh, bets here, call the gut shots. Turn eight. So this is definitely turning into a hand. It could be a good big bluff run out here for us if they check. But once we see better, I'm going to fold the gutter. saying nice call thank you we saying great call yeah i was, I was glad that one worked out that was one where I either looked like a genius or a complete idiot <laughs> that was one of those spots oh man one of those spots since you're saying sick call has nice call thank you guys We said I would fold 100%. Like I said, I actually maybe should have been a fold, even though it worked out that time. That's definitely one I want to look at. Because I want to see like what value range, what value hands he's supposed to raise there. All right, over here, sixes, open, flats. Decides the lead. We're going to go for the raise of the middle set. Pretty deep here. Third bet on the flop. All right, so we're just going to call in position. And four in the turn. It shouldn't really change anything. I only have like five, three, or eight, five here. So I think against bigger turn bets, I'm just going to get it in and hope they have like an eight, nine, or diamonds inside to call it off. Sets of twos that we just super cooler. If they have sevens, we pay them their money. 
I don't think they're gonna have 8-5 pre. Their stat line 28, 21, and 10, so I really don't feel like they will. Uh, do we ever just call? I don't think so. I think we're gonna get this in. If we call, it's like 300 mil, 177 back. Yeah, we're just gonna get it in here. The sixes. This is a pretty action packed hand. <laughs> So they could have like combo draws that get it in, right? If they have 9 8 of diamonds uh, that decide to go for this here. They have 10 8 of diamonds. So we got 70%, and we do hold with the quads. Nice, that's sick. But that's why we're going to jam the turn there, right? So not only can we maybe cool our twos if they decide to get it in with that, even though twos be kind of a sick spot, those combo draws are still going to call off. Um, and then it makes the rivers can be kind of tough for us in a few spots. So we play a huge pot of sixes again and win that time. Man, six is the hand of the hand of the moment. I was gonna say the hour, but it's more of like the of the ten minutes. Oh, sick, sick hand. All right, so that game's breaking. Chat, we have a two point one k profit at the moment right now. Things are looking good. All right, so I'm gonna join. There's four two hundred games running. I'm in three of them. I'm gonna join the other wait list and then to find a 100 NL game to throw in. So we have four tables. What a sick pot though, <laughs> that was crazy. That was a sick hand. Huge combo draw there. So yeah, like 10-9 of diamonds, 10-8 of diamonds, 8-9 of diamonds, pocket twos. And if, like I said, I don't expect them 8-5 suited. And then I don't... Uh, they have a set of sevens, we just lose, right? It's just what it is. Still to fade some stuff, but getting them 70% pretty solid there for that big of a pot for us. Check all flop over here, turn eight. And then King River, I'm gonna try to check raise River. Maybe with an eight, I should just be going big back because there are obviously like and to be fair, he's probably going to bet it straight very often. All right, try to go for the trap, the check raise. Let's see, that's queen jack. All right, so I had nothing. Things over there, raise and take it. Jack opens through at the ace king. And that's half call. Five in the river. Do have the ace of diamonds here. Could have diamonds in this line. So if we face bats, could get a little out of line here. If they check, we'll just take the showdown now. But yeah, I think I'm gonna get a bit out of line, try to rep diamonds here. And snaps it off, King 10 with the diamonds. All right, bluff no good at the ace track there. And Toots getting, I see we gifting out a couple tier one subs. Appreciate that. We dropping two gift subs, the Toot and Has here. Thanks for doing that, we. Well, that's what's the biggest loss you've had in one night. Uh, playing cash. 
I want to say I had one that was close to like 4.6k or something like that. I don't really remember to be honest for 100% sure, but something in there maybe. Christian say nice hand thing. Thank you. That you guys probably saw the second and sixth's hand now. Yeah, that was a that was a nice one. Good hold there too. We still had to fade a lot, but pretty good spot. Nice hit quads on the end. <laughs> that was uh that was a way to really make sure that we won. He said huge hand. Yeah, that was a sick one. Set versus the big combo draw. We were pretty deep too. I think over 300 effective to start that hand, right? Single raise pop. Three bet on the flop. Not going to see that super often. He's saying almost 11 mines. What a day. Yeah, it's been a crazy one. Sun run too. The crazy thing is I'm not running like way over EV. Or all on EV, I should say. Obviously running way above EV in card distribution, but... Our all in EVs, we're at 19 to 50, so I'm only running like 140 bucks above EV. All in EV. But uh, again, I'd have to imagine my card distribution top tier at the moment. <laughs> top tier. As a reminder, I have two more streams this week. It's going to be a bit lighter the next two weeks. So I'm streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'll be streaming next two days, 5 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll be offline Wednesday, or sorry, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to take some time to watch the NCAA tournament. My absolute favorite sporting event of the year. So I always, uh, last year it overlapped with Coop a little bit. This year it doesn't. So I'm actually like super hyped. <laughs> it does for the last weekend, but again, I'm only playing Sunday. So it, the championship weekend, I'm pretty confident is like Saturday, Monday. So I'm going to watch, uh, it's 10 days worth of basketball we watched. I'm so excited for it. So, but, uh, but yeah, I've, I've really enjoyed streaming. I've streamed a lot of hours this year already. Obviously when you're running well, I think it helps. The stream's doing well, lots of people watching. So I really appreciate that. A lot of people active in chat and I think the start of the year is about as good as I could have possibly hoped for both on the tables and stream wise. So appreciate everyone supporting and really excited going into the, the rest of the year here because I switched the time that I was streaming at from so doing daytime US to nighttime US. I thought long term we could do pretty well with it, but I was I was definitely concerned with how maybe the first six months or so would go. But everybody's been supported from the get go on the change. So I've been uh, really appreciative of that and it's been great. Uh, especially with these night streams, it's kind of how the year, it's going to go out throughout the year, right? I'm just going to have some times where I'm streaming a lot, sometimes not as much. Um, probably not too many times where I'm gone for like a week or more, maybe just like for PokerStars live events. If I go to visit my parents, usually it's for about a four day stretch, so that wouldn't be a full week, so. Uh, we saying great job on comms tonight as well. Thank you, I appreciate that. Thanks for checking it out. It's always a lot of fun doing that with Nick. Nick's awesome to work with. Um, the thing I really like about what he does is he just he makes the conversation like super smooth, easy going, just calming. And you know, especially for me, it's a little bit difficult doing like tournament commentary sometimes because I'm just not I'm not studied in tournaments, especially when you're in like late stage tournaments where I see him and playing b bounty tournaments, the things I know the least. Um, but he makes it really easy to talk with and just like hanging out with a friend. And he's really good at what he does. So shout out to Nick for always uh, doing a great job with that as well but yeah if you guys didn't see it today i was on the poker stars channel doing some commentary for the sunday millions day two which was a lot of fun i enjoyed it i think it's the third time i've done it now i've done it twice with just nick and i and then had one time where it was me nick and arlie that was a lot of fun too arlie's always a a great time to chat with and uh do some content with it's gonna be jamming queens small blinders button here snap full take it down So reminder, we're going to the six hour mark today. So because I did the comm today, it was a little bit off. So I was normally going to do five to 12 to start today. But instead today, we're going to go seven to one. So streaming an hour later, but still an hour total less of streaming still. But uh, the next two days, I don't think we'll have anything come up. So it should be 5 p.m. to midnight. Good to see you, Malt. It's a great uh, work today and love the sixes and the rationale. Thank you. Yeah, that was uh, that sixes call down. So that's one of the bigger calls I've made in a long time. <laughs> like one of the lightest calls I've made in a long time. It's just one of those spots. I'm just like, dude, it's like, it's hard to find a lot of value hands on that flop check raise. But I'm like, I can name a lot of draws and they all missed. But again, sixes, I would have really rather had sevens or eights, but 
still, uh, it's good at least we didn't have the club for that reason. A weird spot for us to face pot on. They can have ace king in range. I'm actually gonna make a super nitty fold here. Theory wise, probably bad because I can have like club draws and gutters and stuff, but we'll make the, the tight fold there. It's, I was gonna call most sizes, but pot or bigger, I'll start folding, especially when they're shallower behind. Button limps we complete, big blind checks, bet the open under, backdoor spades. And then turn the straight, but it's a diamond, so. Paired boards well, I'm actually gonna go for the check here. I'm not sure I love this, but we'll check. Not a great river, uh, blocking to call if we get raised. And unfortunately, chopping. Not the river card we wanted. Raise as king against the limper, top pair, top kicker, king 10 and 6. Go for bet. See the fold. So we continue to fold, 10 6 over here, drop that. 9 4 over here, drop that as well. Say it on the button. Well said, I'll be falling asleep with you on for a long time now that I find an easy stream to listen to while I sleep. Nice. Hey, everyone's got the purpose for the stream, right? But yeah, I'd say pretty, like I said, the stream here is like pretty chill vibe. Some chill music. Nothing too crazy. Hopefully some winning poker, right? <laughs> Hopefully we're winning money today. We are, but can't guarantee that every day. Alright, raise safe, king, queen suited, king, queen over here. So open, under the gun, big blind defends, nine, six, two, two diamonds. Go ahead and check this back, four diamonds on the turn. And check and turn. Let's play to go ahead and bluff this river here, just with king high. And see the fold. Jack over here opening hijack. And 
is king over here. What opens here? Three by three is king. Take it down. Tax said WTF 2.1 win. Yeah, it's been a... Got to close out strong still, but today's been a huge day. Huge, huge day at this point. Value bet river over here. Check, check, flop. Check, check, turn. Bet river to the fold. Three bet here, get called, go ahead, bet flop. Shoot, I just checked the status spot. I never want to check it. Uh I should have a look at table strong. <laughs> River quads. So let's go check check flop. I meant to bet here and I just checked and then they overbet turn. <laughs> we hit quads on the river. Uh, this is what a what a run out. And then checks will go for bets. On with King Jack against the ace high flusher on this other table. Unfortunately, it's the ace. So we're going to lose that. So betting the fours here. And it's obviously the fold. But yeah, King Jack, we kind of ran away from. Sorry, I had quads. I was like, I want to show quads, but I'm going to lose. Drops a profit a little bit under 2k now. Those three bet pre calls, flops the ace high flusher, we flop a good top pair. Completely fine to be getting that in when I bet three quarters, especially, so. It's over here. Grant saying great day. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's been a sick day for sure. Just under 10 buy-ins now after that last one losing, but um, <laughs> sick thing is I'm actually running below EV now. <laughs> Again, I gotta emphasize all in EV because the card distribution has obviously been great. Pretty sick that we have 10 vines and be running blow all in EV. As I said, somehow satellite into the 530 bounty builder on Sunday, nice. Didn't cash, but it was an experience to have three streamers I've watched for years on my table. That's fun. Who are the, uh, who are the streamers on your table? That's awesome though. Very cool experience, and uh, hopefully get another chance at it sometime. Are you planning on playing? So I saw on .com they announced the coop schedule as well. I think it's like May 5th through the 29th. I don't know if I got those days right, but something in there like that. Are you planning on uh, getting in the mix and playing some of those? Anyone else in chat planning on playing coop coming up? Going to dedicate a big schedule to it, or maybe need to wait and see like, the actual event schedule yet. But the save the dates did go out on social media today. Oh no, Cole, you're good. So I hope I wasn't taking the wrong way. Not at all. I've had there's actually been a lot of people that they're like it's just like you have like you know it's like you're watching like sports center or a game on the TV before you know while you're going to bed. I get it. I've never been a huge like TV guy while I go to bed, but I know a lot of people do that.
Yeah, no worries. But I get what you're saying, right? Because usually when you're trying to go to bed, you don't want like some <laughs> lots of noise and craziness going on. You want something pretty chill, right? Like I said, for me, it's like if I have to have TV on or if I choose to, it'd be like Sports Center or a, a game or something. But now I get it with the just the vibe of the stream in general it makes sense. All right, check five four suit here ten ten four. And bats for pot here. Go ahead and call. Check the seven turn. Call King River check. Limp raise through that ace queen. Take it down. Cut off opens here, threading big blind, ace jack suited. Let's see the call. So we flop top pair, top kicker, but it's all spades. Not ideal when you have all hearts. So back call, and then going to go small in the turn as well. These are spots I've been meaning to check, and then as played, we're gonna check river. Hopefully, guys, check check if they bat. I'm just gonna fold here. Snap that's half and I'll drop it. You're about to just fold there. Prediction said almost 2k profit. Yeah, really, really close today. It's been a huge session for sure. Huge session today. Here next suit open, get three bets. Go for the flat. Predictions, if you're wondering how we were running. Here we go. <laughs> Flop in the second nut flush. So we'll have some check raises here. Um, I think we'll probably do it here. So yeah, I go for check raise. I need to go to bigger size here. We'll go for the check raise and see the fold. JR said that's a huge win. Yeah, it's been a can't do this every day. That's for sure. Not gonna have a lot of sessions like this, but when you do have them, it's uh, pretty awesome. Call turn here. Call James. Uh, so you're from Michigan. I'm in the Lansing area as well, actually. So yeah, we're probably pretty close. So yeah, I went to... Uh, I graduated from Hazlitt for high school. Then I went to college down in uh, northern Indiana at Trine University for four years. But then back uh, in the last like 10 years, I've been living back in Lansing area. But yeah, I graduated from Hazlitt in 2010 for high school. Oh, nice has. That's sick. You got to play with Draft, uh, Benton, and Lex. That's sick. Yeah, that's that's quite the table. Probably not a table of people you want to have to play against. 
but from like a ability standpoint because it'd be very tough to play against but from a, a memory standpoint and experience that was pretty awesome Five four suited, uh, player cold four bets, small click will be folding. Max asking if I donate a thousand dollars to do a drunk stream? No. Unfortunately, there'll be no drunk streams here on this channel. We got to keep the vibe going of chill vibe. I don't think me doing a drunk stream is going to be a chill vibe. <laughs> Although when I fall, I guess like when I when I drink or get drunk, like I just get really tired and I just like fall asleep. So I guess maybe it would be <laughs> the vibe still. That was always uh, my friends would always make fun of me. So this is gonna sh this is a long time ago, obviously. But you remember when like when the dab was like a big thing or dabbing. So when I would like if I would drink and I was just like sitting in a chair or something at someone's house, like I would just like fall down and my you know my head would be in like my arms like I was dabbing. So that they would call <laughs> anytime I started doing that, they'd say, "Oh, there's Dave dabbing again." Oh man, that was kind of my uh, my thing <laughs> if I ever got to the point of falling asleep. So has I actually I play in the US so I can't play in those like the dot com big Sundays unfortunately. But yeah, if I could I would I would get in the mix there. But yeah, I'll be playing I'll be playing Coop though. I'll be playing the Coop Sundays. I'm definitely excited for that. So we have the US version running April 5th through the 22nd. So I'm pretty excited for that. All right, guys, we're going to wrap the session there. Appreciate you being here. Six-hour stream today. Pretty profitable. I'm going to do an outro for the YouTube channel. Find each channel to rate. I'll be back the next two days, 5 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time. More cash. All right, YouTube, that wraps up a huge win here today in the Cash Game Street. So we played for a total of six hours, 2,515 hands, plus 1,895. So we're off to a hot start in 2024, and it just keeps on sun running. So hopefully we can keep it up the rest of the year here. If you guys are enjoying these videos, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you ever want to catch the live streams on Twitch, I link to my Twitch channel in the description below.